The following is a presentation of Bakersfield College Athletics. All right, welcome all you renegades out there. This is Rob Chavez, voice of Renegade Sports. We are here at Homecoming 2024, right in the quad in front of the Gil Bishop Sports Center. We're going to take a walk around the Homecoming Barbecue, talk to a couple people that have been here, and see how it goes. But a lot of them. A lot of old football programs over here. So we've got press releases. These are going to be posted online within the next couple months. We have over 30 years of press releases wow. about every sport going from the 50s up through the 80s. Uh -huh. They give play-by-plays. I mean, these are up to six, seven pages long. That's so, amazing. Golf, water polo, um, football, everybody. Track and field. So all of the, uh, the uh, all the Hall of Famers that just went in yes. uh, on Wednesday, they can probably come in and take a look at all this stuff. You know it's going to be online. Yes, it absolutely is. I printed each of them a book with their own press releases. Oh, wow. And we had them. That's so awesome. that was at our Athletics Hall of Fame display over there. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, all right. So well, really cool stuff. Well, and thanks they, for showing us this. My pleasure. For our 76th team, we've actually got their yearbook over right here. their plays and their team photo in there somewhere. There we go. Some Metro champs. Mm -hmm. So we just posted um, a video too, kind of honoring them and some artifacts we had of them as well. It's amazing. Well, congratulations to the 1976 team going into the Hall of Fame just this past Wednesday. And uh, if you are alumni, come on down and take a look at the archives. Yes, please. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thanks for stopping by. John Rogers, 20 years on the board here at Bakersfield College. Yes, sir. Right? And during the time I was here as well, too. Yeah. Some, some glory days yeah. back then. They were good days. What do you think of this? Listen, I think it's great. They, they used to have it on the football field, but I like it here. Uh, people can do a lot of mingling and everything, still go to the game. Uh, I like the beer garden. <laughs> and the food was outstanding. Awesome. The food was outstanding. In the entertainment, I've been here for about an hour or so and heard lots of different kinds of, of entertainment. It's all great. It's just great to be here. Good. Yeah. Well, I hope we do this every year. All right. All right. It's good to you, meet sir. you. Good to meet you. Enjoy. Take care. here in the kitchen and again if, if all of you folks that have been to BC before you guys were students before probably don't recognize this place from what it looked like 20 30 40 50 years ago uh, but it's really nice we've got everybody here from the culinary arts program probably the best culinary arts program for a junior college community college in the United States I'm gonna say it I'm gonna brag on my on my on my school all right yeah absolutely so how's it been very great Fun experience. Yeah. It's very comprehensive. Good. So now, was this something that you guys thought of right after high school, or just kind of went through some things and been like, you know what, I need to go back to college? I'm retired from the county, and so this is my first time ever going to college. Wow. So I came in and I did my general ed, and then I was like, what am I going to do? And so I got into the culinary program, and I love it. Gotcha. My pop told me I should try it. Started it, loved it ever since. Yeah. This is the second career for me also. I did accounting for school, um, nutrition program. So it's kind of been the vein of what I was doing before. But I decided I wanted to be in the kitchen. So here I am, it's been great. Really? Yeah, it came like right after. But I mainly got inspired from my dad because I would always cook with him in the kitchen. And so I was like, damn, I might want to do this for the rest of my life. Right out of high school. Right out of high school or high school? Miramonte. Miramonte. Yeah. All right, stand up line. Yep. 
<laughs> All right. Well, thanks, thanks for you guys, and we're gonna try this out here too pretty soon. Paul, we interviewed, we interviewed a lot of your students. All walks of life, and they came here, and I said best culinary program in a community college anywhere you can find. It. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. So, what do you like about the students here? Uh, I just love how enthusiastic and diverse that everybody is. Everybody's coming in from a different background, and that's what I love about cooking is like. Uh, they all bring something different to the table. They might have something from their family that I've never had before, and it makes me excited about it, right? I'm like they'll mention something, and I'm like, "What is that? I've never had that." You know, They're like food's always it. evolving. Let's try it, yeah. right? So, and I love it. Then you can take other people's culture, and then you can start playing with it, and then having it like make it your own, put your own fun twist on it. So awesome. that's what I love about cooking, and people just coming in from all different walks of life. Okay, so before BC, where were you at? Uh, I was a chef all over uh, in the Bay Area, so I've been a chef for. 24 years. Wow. Uh, and then, uh, so yeah, all over the Bay. And then I was a chef at Seven Oaks Country Club oh, okay. for a while. And then now I'm here. Well, what's your signature dish? Uh, oh, that's a good question because everybody always asks this. <laughs> it's whatever is like in season. I love using fresh fruits and vegetables, right? Okay, yeah. So in the fall, right, we have all those like gourds, squashes, things like that. And I like to focus my menu around that. So I like to think of vegetables first. And then we can add other things to it. So, because whatever's in season is going to taste the best. Okay, so a good October dish that you're going to make right now is? Ooh. Oh, we could do like a sweet potato gnocchi, right? Okay, Some homemade yeah. ricotta cheese, something like that. Yeah. I'll take a gnocchi all day. Yeah, there we go. All right, Paul, appreciate right. it. Awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah. Again, can't beat it. Anybody wants to become a chef, work in a kitchen at a really nice restaurant, Come right here to Bakersfield College. Get trained. Chef Paul, he's a great guy. Work with some of these great students that are here, right here at Bakersfield College. Is one pulse has elected to defer to the second half. Bakersfield will receive. <laughs> Head coach for the Allen Hancock Bulldogs is Rick Aguilar. For the Renegades are Todd Littlejohn. Officials for today's game referee Tony Clayton. Umpire Ken Osborne. Headlights from Sam Hubbard. Line judge, Herman Hillman. Field judge, Freddie Alexander. Side judge, Joe Garcia. And back judge, Ken Montierrez. You guys have to call Vigo Boyce to win it now.
the shotgun takes the handoff to Hankins getting pressured early and he's going to go down for a sack back at the 25 yard line so it's going to be a loss of five already on the first quarter on the tackle number 91 with the tackle that is Salafi Lea Siloga at a Waipahu Hawaii It's always great when you get a press release from another school and they've got phonetic spelling on the other side. We've got number two, Jacoby Pointer. He's going to be up past the 35-yard line. He's get a good chunk of yards up to the 36-yard line. Gain of 11 right there. And like I said in the pregame, you're going to see number two, Jacoby Pointer, in the backfield, not just split out right. So that's four weapons you have in the backfield going along with David Smith, Bubba Nettles, and Jalen Higgins. Now we've got third and four. Again, the Renegades looking to convert here on the season. 38% from third down. It's definitely a stat that Coach Little John and Coach Dammer want to improve, and they might do it right here. Oh, the pass was to Jalen Richmond. He got it up to the 39-yard line. He only had to get another yard up, and that would have been a first down. And because of that, we're going to have a punt as we've got number 36, Jack Smith, going out there. And again, we're going to talk a little bit about Jack Smith. Jack has no return yards so far. And if I had a piece of wood around here, I'd knock on it. Because in five games, no return yards. He is just an absolute animal back there. It's going to get away. It's going to be already fair caught. So that means no return yards again for Jack Smith as he gets it down to the 23-yard line. Fair caught by number number three, Makai Puka, out of Royal Grande High School. And as we see, the Hall of Famer himself enters the Dameron deck. I thought I heard something about this isn't 94 anymore. <laughs> it's 24. 30 years later, my friend. So here we go, first and 10 from the 23. We've got quarterback number one, A.J. Valet, hands it off to number two, Caden Harris. It looks like we got a loose football down there. Who's going to recover it? Logan Goodspeed has the football in his hand, but they're motioning that that ball was down already. So it gets it up to the 28-yard line, gain of five, second and five. Brought down at the 28-yard line. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And again, officially on air, congratulations on entering the hall. That was awesome. That was awesome. Good scene down there. Now we've got second and five for Hancock. Number 10, get the ball, that's Anthony Tucker. Tucker at Alaney High School in Wilmington, North Carolina. Julia Smith, number seven, with the tackle up at the 31-yard line. 
So a gain of about three, set up a third and two. And again, we were talking about the inefficiency of the Renegades offense, only 38% so far this season from third down, but their defense holding the opponents to 41% on third down. Again, this might be a failed third point, uh, third down conversion, it is. Number two, Caden Harris gets stopped behind the line of scrimmage by a host of tacklers down there for the Renegades. One of them being number 28, David Stevenson. David Stevenson, we hadn't heard his name in a couple of weeks, but already coming up with a nice blitz and a tackle. Jordan Orcutt, back for the Renegades, number one, Matthias Things to get guys in better position to make plays. Great defense. So we've got Makai Smith standing back at his, about his own 33-yard line. There's a flag on the punt. Plenty of room for Makai. Makai takes it at the 30. Dances around, cuts through, and gets back up to about the 33-yard line. We're going to see what this flag is. Is number 49, Jordan Orkut. Well, they're, they're waving, at least Orkut, the punter for Hancock, who... If you're going to ask anybody on the field, ask the punter what, what happened, right? Illegal formation on the defense. Five yard penalty results in a first down. That's one of the. I, I've never. I don't know if I've ever heard illegal formation on a defense. I mean, and what I'm wondering if it is is sometimes you have to respect the long snapper right and give him room if you if you have two guys lined up in that a gap that can sometimes end up in that illegal formation because i do remember a rule change where you have to allow the long snapper to be free and i know as a former long snapper you gotta, you gotta, protect, gotta protect the long snappers man <laughs> i don't like the long snapper. i know you like the long line well i don't know if i had that rule i just know that they can launch over me we got number two Harris takes the ball up and he's going to get a first down brought out of bounds by number 21 and Antonio Ackward. Well, as soon as we celebrate and three and out, he's going to get a first down and the next play is a 10 yard game. Definitely always seems like as soon as you let a guy off the hook, they get some additional momentum. First and 10. Like you say, they, they love that power run. One of the guys that I see down there is wearing number 45. Dominic Soros for Hancock. He goes 5'9", 242. The fullback right there is a left-handed QB. Gets it out quick. A little slant route. Number three, Makai Puga. You know, we had a tough go at it last year. Versus Hancock, you don't want to let these guys off the hook because they can be a better team when they start getting that momentum and we just help them. And now they seem to be rolling. Yeah, a little momentum, momentum as they get into the renegade side of the field on the 45. 10 24 remaining. High spread set. They love that traditional fullback. We've got Puga in motion. Ball's handed off to Harris. Harris is going to get chased down from behind by Julian Smith and Antonio Hackworth is the second tackle. And again, we, I was saying in the pregame before you got here that we hadn't heard D'Antonio's name a whole lot, and that's usually because he's shutting people down. But when you hear his name, it's not necessarily a good thing for the defense. It means that our running backs, are, our, their running backs are able to get to that second and third level. Man, we had this conversation earlier this week as well as Smith lost containment. It's not a great thing for a DB to, or a corner and safeties to have upward of 15 tackles. That means linebackers aren't making plays. High formation spread set. Fele gets the ball out to number 83. And that is Rolling Davis. 
Rolling As Davis. you see, partner, everything seems to work right now ever since the penalty. Well, stop number 11, Eric Martinez. Now, now Rolling Davis, I got to bring this up. He's, labeled, he's listed here as 5'5", 165. How do you like that, Kenny? Man, I love it, man. It reminds me of guys like the great renegade Brandon Banks. 5'6", Beast, out of North Carolina. Ah, end up the MVP of the Canadian League. Look that up. Brandon Banks in the record books here. Yeah, Washington Redskins. Fake, Fake handoff, Pele. Gets the ball, ball out to, to number, number three, Puga. Puga out of Arroyo Grande High School. Tackled by number seven, Kevin Smith. Another first down for Hancock down at the 19 yard line with 845. First down, Ellis Hancock. And you know Hancock's That's pumped up the way there for coach, new coach Dameron. Probably has a player or two still on that roster. Best for a defense that's played pretty well. Bailey out of the high formation hands it off to number 10, Anthony Tucker. And off to number 10, Anthony Tucker. Anthony Tucker. Martinez, and we had talked about those linebackers also. On the tackle number 11, Aaron Martinez. Well, Kenny, and the and fact that they were nursing Will some Bella. bumps and bruises. And uh, getting a chance to talk to Coach Romero. And yard on the play, second down is nine. It was at the eight yard line. Having that by week. Right now, it seems like that week off gives you a little rest for defense that's played for the And that looks like that might have been a lateral. And that was out to Puga. Puga was able to AJ get past number, number five, Danny Johnson. Johnson. Forced out of bounds by number five, Danny Johnson. Gets the ball up to the 11-yard line. Bringing a third and two. Pick up the seven yards on the play. Third down to get it up to the 11-yard line. And they got the fullback Soros. Number 10, right up the middle, it's Gaden Harrison. All the carry, number 10, down, Anthony Tucker. Down to the six yard line. Tackle by number seven, Julian Smith. First and goal, Bulldogs at the Renegade six yard line. First that of all, is that this has been a 10 play center. drive for 66 yards so far already. So a double digit drive, keeping the defense out on the field was pretty effective for him. We got again another heavy set. Ball handed off this time. Oh, right up the middle and skips past the top of the field. Well, here's the Gaten Harris for a full off touchdown. Also the extra point, number 12, Chris Sapie. I think the defense might have been watching me run up here. <laughs> 11 yes, plays, 77 yards for the Bulldogs. The, the kick in is good. 631 left to go in the third quarter. So the it's the Renegade game, Zero, the Bulldogs 7. All right, we are back. And with the kickoff after the Hancock touchdown, Julian Smith had an opportunity to take his, get his second return of the game. Again, Julian Smith. Very active so far today. Got a couple of tackles, but also two returns. He's he's one of the most active guys on offense, night in and night out. I didn't recall seeing a flag, but thank you very much. Yeah, we'll take it as the Renegades are now going to be able to get it started at nearly the 37-yard line, first and 10. 
And we see a nice sunset. Always the best view in Bakersfield right up here on the Dameron deck, Kenny. Yeah, I just had to get that shot, too. Trips right. Renegades go right back to the ground. A great penetration. A nice effort with the feet just to get back to the line of scrimmage. And a, oh, and a late. A real late penalty. Tackle by number eight, Rebel Beauty. I'm going to throw on coach. <laughs> that was some great form of white hat. I mean, nice velocity. Anytime you guys get a chance to. Capture the play. Personal foul. Offense, number 60. 15 yard penalty. Second down. back to the 22-yard line. They're trying to get to the 47. First and 25. Ball's passed out to Jalen Richmond. Richmond almost had a seam right there. And if it wasn't for, it looked like number 29 for the Bulldogs. This one goes past the place number one, Makai Smith. Out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Over here, Lincoln High. And it's not. <laughs> it's right. I go. I go. Looks up. Got a man. He's got a man, and that is going to be complete at the 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Renegade. Boom! That's the little girl. He said he was going to give you that. Number two, Jacoby Pointer. Early in the game, we seen him in the backfield. He picked up 11 yards on a run. And right there, a big strike. Carlos Villa. It's one of those that you just say, man. It's Villa. His kick is up. And it is good. 5 28 remaining in the first quarter. And we're going to keep it right here uh, through the kickoff. And uh, just to ask you really quick uh, overall, down there on the field in, in the pregame, what are what some of the things that you took away from that? Some of the conversations that you were having down there? Man, it, you know, it goes back to what I say every week. You know, I'm, I'm a. I feel, still feel like a younger generation player, right? But I played 30 years ago. <laughs> you know, and, and you're down there with guys like Mike Waffle, who coached for the Bills and seven other NFL organizations. And your first coach, Coach Sikowski, who was uh, a linebacker on that Renegade team in 76. It's one of those moments where you just want to shut up and enjoy the moment, man. Like, I, it's probably the most quiet pregame I've ever had, just watching and soaking up the energy. Shikowski also a standout baseball player as well. Back to the the Bulldogs. First high school coach. Heck of a uh, baseball. Kicking off the Renegades. Number three, Chick Jackson. You know, I've been asked all week that same question, and I just, you know, remind people how grateful I am to be part of the process. Oh, Muff. Muff right, right there. there. By, By number three. three. Makai Poo. We, we still, still got, got some action, action happening out, out there after, after the whistle. <laughs> just just good, 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 good football right, 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 right Yeah, I mean, it's, it's what you want guys to do. You want them to play through the whistle. Some people play to the whistle. We're coached to play through the whistle. Important for the Renegades to try to minimize first downs because this first quarter is fine. Man, I missed all the high school games yesterday. Even the big one at the homecoming. Right here for homecoming 2024. Good attendance, good good turnout so far tonight. And up number two, Kate Harris. Kate Harris once again. Tackle by number 93. 93, Charlie Gonzalez. He's getting the tackle first and they have to stop. Picking the two on the play. Second down, 
High formation spread set. I was going to say that because you weren't there. That, that's what I'm feeling like. <laughs> Lele. Lele. It's, it's ball, ball out. out. Oh, oh, and this call. Ruled right out there to run. run. And and that's that's number three. three. AJ Bill is seven. That's number three. Ty Puka, but he's down by number seven. And that's a big play, so. The Renegades got their big play, and now the Bulldogs come right back and get it down to the Renegades' 20-yard line. Great route concept by Allen Hancock. They had twins right, two receivers, and they run that scissor route, but the out route turns into an out and up if you're peeking, and that's what happened. Nice pass. Fortunate to stop them. First and 10. So Vele. Inside Hands the ball track. off up the middle to the fullback. It's a different fullback in the game. It's not number 45 this time. And I think that's going to be a personal foul, late hit on the offensive lineman blocking downfield. It's unfortunate because that was just him doing exactly what we talked about, playing through the whistle. On the play. Well, let's see what they call it. Number 22, Brian Alvarez. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Yep. Offense, number 80. Yep, you know, receivers and linemen Take continuing to block downfield. And I'm going to just be honest, I don't necessarily like that call because we just saw it Play happen the on whistle. the other, other end where you're just playing through the whistle. But, it, you know, it's just a, a second too late, and he's so far down the field blocking. Just cost his team some field position. But I like it. Again, you know, you, you every year, every day we, we hear DeBarge coming out of the uh, the voice of the great <laughs> Kenny Calvin. And, of course, what was mentioned at the Hall of Fame dinner was uh, Vance Palm talking about <laughs> DeBarge. <laughs> Man, it, right, he did bring up DeBarge. <laughs> they go right back to that read zone. He's still pushing. So Makai Puga on the carry, brought down by number 68, Brian Holly. You know, I had a chance to be down on the field today, and, and I was standing right by a guy that I hadn't stood next to, and he just came on the field. Logan Goodspeed. Logan Goodspeed. This dude, this dude looked like he can play on Sundays already, Renegade Rock. He had a crew, went about 25 deep at the barbecue. I'm sure Gio uh, remembers that me and Gio went through the barbecue, did a couple of interviews. Yeah, he told me, man. There. That's super tight. That was awesome. Because now we got Harris. Harris on the sweep. Got a helmet that came off. Two helmets came off in the same play. How about that? 58 on offense, 99 on defense. And now we've got more penalties on the field. Yeah, I mean, and you and can't fault the officials. They're, just, they're trying to keep control of the game, but it just looks like guys are getting after each other. Hopefully you don't get one of those helmets snatched off by the face mask, though, Renegade Rob. We're going to see what happened there as the as a gain of about six yards on that play. They're going to be marching it out. Personal foul. Face uh, mask penalty against Bakersfield College. And again, in talking to a number of the coaches uh, in the bye week, they were talking about how they were, and again, I mentioned this before you got up here, we're three points away from tying and being 5-0, and oh, but really five points if you want to say, okay, that's what we would need to win those two games that we lost by three. And the biggest thing that they came up with was the fact that they just shot themselves in the foot with self-inflicted penalties and mistakes on the defensive side. Yeah, and that's what's tough. You, you coach guys up. You give them the X's and O's, but you can't give them the emotional balance. So Alvarez, the fullback, right up the middle. He gets nailed about a, just a, about a yard off the line of scrimmage by Jackson Provencal. Let's go back to the penalty, though, because that penalty took place. It was third and about 16, <laughs> right? But it's the second time where you've given a team an opportunity to stay on the field. Based on your own mistakes, that's bad discipline by the guys. That's not on the coaches. That's on individual players making bonehead mistakes. People always want to blame coaches. Sometimes you got to blame players and hold them accountable. Oh, don't you know? I mean, Jesse, right here, my guy. We're on a uh, we're on a text group of Dodger fans. Oh. As we got Vele, he gets down near the goal line. Big hit by Aaron Martinez, but not before. Hancock 
gets down to the one yard line, gets a first down. So it'll be first and goal for the Bulldogs on a basically just looked like it was going to be a waggle. He rolls out and then he just decides to tuck it because he's got 11 yards of green grass in front of him. Yeah, about the third time that our outside backer is playing a discipline and not reading his keys and keeping containment. You have the quarterback as the defensive end or outside backer. You're looking at the running back on that fake and you get beat outside. First and goal. Just under a minute to play. Score tied at seven for the moment. But the, Ren or the Bulldogs are knocking at the door at the one-yard line. We got a little procedure, I thought, before the, before the wow. play. They didn't call it. Vele. The ball came out. So Vele gets the ball down. Oh. And he gets stopped short of the goal line. But you, you and I have seen the same thing. Brian Alvarez, number 22, the fullback for Hancock, got a little bit of a head start. Yeah, I definitely saw him roll. And what he's trying to do is get that push going. And that's what makes that missed penalty even more crucial. Because he's trying to cheat with the push, the tush push. You expect the same thing again. So Vele gets the ball, and he is in with the quarterback sneak. And that's going to that's going to bring the score to 13 to 7 for Hancock. And uh, again, just deflated because of a penalty. Yeah, I mean, it, and it's it's tough to even be. <laughs> Angrily upset about a, a, a lopsided game in the first quarter, being down a touchdown when it was just discipline errors. It's really just frustrating to watch. Got to be more disciplined throughout the experience, man. It's just tough. This, this has been a penalty fest in this first quarter with one second left. Oh, sorry. Offense. So this might be uh, Beneficial, beneficial right, right here. They're going to back up the ball. The ball. It's going to be a little bit, a bit of a longer extra point. point. About 25 uh, yards for number, number 12. 12. It's uh, Chris, Chris Sapi. He's out of Jolio, London town. <laughs> still, still got a lot of extracurricular stuff going after the snap. Got it. Find a way as coaches to rally the guys to understand to stop making the bonehead mistakes, man. Too many penalties. Yeah, early in the game, and we're going to take a look to see, you know, here as far as the stats go. Renegades, three penalties for 32 yards, but those are very critical 32 yards in the game. Two of them on third down penalties, just like you were saying. The opportunity for the defense to get off the field. And they yeah, I mean, it's, it's really. <laughs> I'll say it once a week, man. That's why coaches have gray hair or none at all. That's why I'm buying uh, blackouts every two weeks. <laughs> all them stress and things to get me. Blowing coverages and stuff like that. You either go gray or ball, man. Well, again, I'll knock on wood because <laughs> the grays are coming just a little at a time, and I've got a lot of hair, so. They on the way. <laughs> Don't you know it. <laughs> We're both girl dads. So. Ball taken by Jacoby Hunter at the 15-yard line. He's, He's got, got a lot, lot of space, and he finally brought, brought down. down. And I tell you what, if we are on the first, that's the end of the first quarter. The score, the Bakersfield College won game seven. The Allen Hancock will do it for the first quarter. quarter. Hancock Bulldogs go to the second quarter as a proud win for Bakersfield College. All teams, zero compromise. He is on the sideline. He is wrapped up. Uh, but getting on the play, second down and ten. To, uh, I get a chance to see his dad once every other week. Uh, Randall was telling me definitely taking it easy on the right. Fake handoff. I go it. Oh, he gets the ball 
was strict. Whether or not it came out on a fumble or a pass, that ball was either intercepted or a Another one out of four. Now the ball from the for the 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 They look like they've got, they definitely came out with a purpose. You hear a lot of hooping hollering, but if you can hear it down there a little bit better from just from the other side of the sideline, but from up here, we can hear that line. Pitches it out on a sweep and it gets picked up by number 12, Will Campbell. On the carry, number two, Kate Harris. Tackled by number 12, Will Cannabella. Loss of two yards on the play, second down and 12. I step up, just take these in the hands. Hopefully, let's see what we do that on the defense. Will Cannabella is that guy. Yeah, when you were when you were talking about that, they sprint to the ball here, and uh, DC didn't look like they were ready for that. Finally, get on the line. Pele looks up, doesn't have an open receiver just quite yet. Now he does, but it, that ball is nearly picked off. And yeah, like you said, it hammer right there. And that's that's number, nine, number 83, Roland Davis. Ball is incomplete. man, Josh Macon. Making a big hit right on the play, there. number 21, Jacksonville Zappler. Living up to his hometown. Big down. And again, I tell you, this Makai Puga came to play today. Last complete to number three, Makai Puga. Gonna have to add, gonna have On the stop number 11, jump. Aaron Martinez. Two my connections in a row, Rodney, to ask about him. He's an ATV. Let's see how, how much of a player he was. Fourth down and four for the Bulldogs. So here we go, fourth down, ball at the 36 yard line, trying to get to the 32. Big play right here. Oh, now he jumped off sides and he reset. I mean, is that something that he could do over good speed? So we have a delay. So here's the thing. Can you tell me? Because this is Logan Goodspeed. He's got a direct vantage point yes, at that play at clock. clock. That's why he went. So he jumped right at zero. That's bad news. Nice. We're not looking at the play clock. He is. He's got his eye right on it. And it's going on, on the puck of the Bulldogs, number 49, George Orcutt. I thought he jumped. So now on the fourth and nine, Hancock is back the forced to punt. That's a big penalty. Brooks is back to the Renegades, number one, Makai Smith. Low line drive of a punt is going to go into the. Oh, it's going to hit the pylon. Yes. That is a touchback. If that comes out anywhere short of that, that ball is down at maybe the one foot line. Like that guy, that like a nice little shot over there to the corner. So running against the left ball at their own 20 yard line, first and 10. What degree wet was that right there? <laughs> See, we don't have we don't have Vance up here. The other the Vance other is quarter quarter is brought to you by Les White Tire. Gentiles. 
stature. But his shifty game six yards on the play, second down and four at the 26 yard line. You brought up Brandon Banks, sir. Well, shoot, I mean, he's, he's thicker than Brandon Banks. He's a little bit more powerful than Brandon. Points left. And Pointer stays in the game as a deep set. We got Tolbert in motion. Igoa gets the ball out to Richmond. Richmond squirts past the 35 yard line. We got a first down for the Renegades. Right at about the 36 yard line. Yeah, I love the Rocky screen because on the stop number 95, Ahmad Cubbins. First down, Renegades at their own 36 yard line. Yeah. Also, a great blocking scheme by the receivers in that tight end. First and 10. It's Pointer again. And up number two, Jacoby Pointer. Yards right there. Number zero, On the tackle, number Jack, zero, Jack Gentile. Gentile. They put Gentile because maybe he didn't want to call the Gentile. Gave him two yards on the <laughs> play. <laughs> Second down and eight. Because I heard that's what Titan yard line. Touchdown, Tom. Yeah, stay away from all the Gentile. 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 Second and eight. Ball spotted at the 37-yard line. Well, 38. I go. Quick pass, quick out route to Jacoby Pointer again. Pass complete to number two, Jacoby Pointer. On the coverage. Number nine, Kai Miller. Gain of six yards on the play. Third down and two at the 44-yard line. Seven touches so far today. Three on the ground, four in the air. Oh no, he had that one. He had that one for 80. <laughs> yeah, all purpose. He's at right at 99 yards so far today. We're going again. Pointer right up the middle, and he gets a first down for the running. Number two, Jacoby Pointer on the carry. This, this is the beauty of. Tackle by number six, Connor Wiles. We said, First down, Renegades at the 48 yard line. You can't put 10 back. Look like it's Jacoby Pointer right now. Coach Dean and uh, <laughs> Tell you what, they've got, a, they've got a guy out of Mississippi that is showing out today at homecoming. Pass out. And I think that's your man, Devin Sunday. Vincent Agoa's pass completes to number 88, Devin Sundgren. On the tackle number five, Jake Matthews. Gave him six yards on the play, second down and four. At the hold on 46 yard line. That little out route could be one of those slant and goes a little bit later on. Here we go. Showing blitz. Bulldogs send it, and now they get a rocket screen, and we've got a lot of room up front. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Renegades, number 8, Jalen Richmond. Lou Bro said he had one for me, too. I got Lou Bro on Instagram. He said, I got you, Coach Cal. Showed out, and we saw it. Hard like the Red Sea. Now we go back to the Bible again. <laughs> but that, that's real no right there. Play. Rocket screen. The player was blocked into the quarterback, and therefore no foul. The zone of play, touchdown. Okay, we had to listen to that because there's so many damn ball penalties that change things around here. <laughs> but going back to the diagnosis of that play, we talked about getting the ball to your playmakers and allowing them to make a play, but that was a great blocking scheme. The whole offensive line got out there and cleared it out. He parted like the Red Sea. I'm going to start calling Jalen Finch Moose. <laughs> God, I thought we were going to stay away from that. Man, man, you got to talk man. You got to talk man. You got to listen. You got to start talking. Well, we got Moses and a Gentile out there. <laughs> and it is good. 856 for me in the first it's half. 14, 14. We're going to take a quick time out on Fairness Talk. And we'll live in 80 days. Fans, if you buy tires or less blocks, you get America's best tire warranty. Back to the seat for the Bulldogs, number three, Makai Tuga. Getting 
Jets have gone to Jets. <laughs> <laughs> because we've got a tie ball game right here. Jack Smith taking off, and it's going to be a sprint kick right up the middle. He's going to be taken at the 14-yard line. Oh, oh there yeah. is some room. Jack Smith was able to run some interference right there to allow for a come from behind tackle. Great job. Tackle by number 20, Nathaniel yeah, Wallace. Number 20, Nathaniel Wallace, in on that tackle. And this is a big deal because just before the game, Coach, uh, Coach Matt Alvarez texted me and basically was, again, bragging about the fact that still five games in zero return yards on punts. That is, that right there, not only all Americans, he should, he's a weapon just like Jacoby Pointer, just like Jalen Richmond, just like Jalen Hankins. You need a guy like this. Right, he tried to get up. That's why you don't to tackle him. You kick his tackle. So hopefully this is just something that's cool. You see Coach Alvarez out there, right. we just talked about. What happens right there, Renegade Rod, as a, as a coverage team, right now you're feeling dejected because that's your responsibility. His job is kick the foot. Yeah, he's out there, last line of defense. But you guys got to do a better job of not getting caught by that wedge and fighting through there and, that, and staying in your lanes. Like, we haven't talked a lot about that. On kickoff, you got to stay in your lanes. Right until you get to a certain point. If you get out of your lane at any time, now you're creating those holes that we just saw on the drive that Winnebago through. But so, Jack pops up. Man. And it looked like that Ready might, that might be just up on the play, situation. number 36, Jack Smith. You know, possibly a pulled muscle on the calf. You don't need a cart. You signal for or a couple go, of Or things. ankle, you know, it's possibly getting rolled on. Either way, that it is that is his kicking leg. And that's so, so unfortunate because we, we've had some success with Jack in special teams way. And every week I'm talking about how we're doing kicks right on. Right. 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 aspect of any of us who want to be kickers, field goal kickers, and bone snappers at practice, you're trying to see if the coach will let you be the holder and all that, and you can't do it. It's a hard job, man. So when you when you got a guy that's executing, you want to keep him safe and healthy, man. That's, that's a big blow for two. He's got Carlos Villa and another uh, Daniel Hartman out there that was carrying him off. First and ten, Bulldogs have their own 44 yard line. 44 yard line for the Bulldogs after the injury of Jack Smith. Ball we'll handed off up the middle of Caden Harris. Harris getting wrapped up and by Aaron number two, Caden Harris. Wrapped up. On the tackle, number 11, Aaron Martinez. First down, that's where the game will be five yards. Gain of 11 yards on the play. First down and 10 at the Renegade 45 yard line. Back to a tight game, 8 25 to play. Not a ball as a defense. You know, use anything you can as motivation. Carry number 10, Anthony Tucker. Excuse brought me. down by number 43, made a move. Bulldogs in the Renegade 34-yard line. Spirit set. Bailey under center. Pitches down a sweep to Harris. Harris got some nice blocking right there. Was able to allow him to get about four yards. On the carry number two, Caden Harris. Tackle by number five, Danny Johnson, Danny and number Johnson seven, Julian Smith. But you had a guy out there. Number 77, Jacob Carpenter. Gator four on the play, second down and six at the 30 yard line. 6'4, 290 leading the way. Yeah, that's what we can't do. <laughs> yeah, from way up here. Some big boys coming around that corner, man. It's easy for me to talk about blowing up and getting right there in front of that bowling guard. With some big boys. Second and six, Bailey. Hitch, hitch route out to number 18, and Aaron Martinez is able to wrap him up. Pass complete to number 18, George Avalos. Avalos had a 
On the tackle number 11, Aaron Martinez. See Jorge Avalos and you're thinking, okay, yeah, maybe out of uh, Guadalupe, California, Santa Maria. No, this guy's from Memphis. In six on the play, first down at the 24 yard line. Right behind him, we see your guy, number 33, the by number 11, Martinez, and number 33, Phoenix Tusa. Martinez, man, he's the one guy that's trying to wake his game up as well. Lost of two yards on the play, second and 12, from the 26 yard line. Again, these guys having to fill some big shoes of Logan Bowers. And I'll tell you, and, and, it, and, it, and it was, I had a chance to talk to Coach linebackers coaches here and he was telling me that some things didn't work out for Logan Hardy and uh, he's back in town. So now oh we've got some oh, pressure. Now we've got a flag and the pass is complete and in the end zone for a touchdown. Pass completion number 18. George Avalos, penalty marker throw back at the 31 yard line. Right there. Right in front of the white hat. Road left. You know right in front of the white hat as you say we gave Rob Great job by the official, because I, I mean, I saw exactly what he saw. Cody, offense, number 74. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. We play second down. Number 74's helmet came off. He must leave the play, we can seal for one play. Gese Toto Apasala was the guy who was called for the holding, but he also had his helmet come off. Great right head of here. Gay Toto. By Noah Pago Pago. So out of the shotgun this time, Vele. But Harris behind him. Oh, and it was it looks like there was a little miscommunication right there. On the oh, break, and the ball was out. Ball came out. It was recovered, but we're going to see if he was covered. We're going to see if he was going down. Pass complete to number 18. Yeah, like George Avalos. Close. Looked like it was close. Off the tackle, number 43, James Lee. Avalos is down at the 25 yard line before the ball came out. Bulldogs will retain possession. Yeah, James Moon, first down. Allen Hancock. Big hit. Now we got third and 11. Here's an opportunity for the Renegades again to shut them down on third and down. So far tonight, two or four for the Bulldogs. As Vele looks up, he's pressured. He's going to roll to his left. He's got, he's closing in. The ball's out. Get on it. Scoop yes. up by Will Cannibalov. We're going to see if this one's down. Yes, it is. Ball yeah. spot at the 40-yard line. Number 12, Will Cannibalov. Great job, D. They have ruled an incomplete pass instead. Wow. It's been ruled. It's a hammer going forward. The pass is incomplete. Wow. So we so can't get the same call up here. <laughs> well, I can wow. tell you this. Probably the biggest crowd of so far in the year. Fourth down, hold on to the 24-yard line. I think in about 75 degrees outside with a nice wind coming in from the northeast. The BC, the BC faithful. We're all on top of this official school team right here. So now we've got a fourth and 11. Bulldogs are in fourth down territory. Four down territory, I should say. Ball spot at the 25. Bailey with the fake handoff. Pressure once again. Tusa gets to him Get first. Him. And now he gets to him again. Phoenix Tusa. Bulldogs stop short of the line to gain. That's the kind of play that you need. It doesn't go your way. You know, First don't give up on yourself. Also in on the stop, number 33, Phoenix Puta. And the ring is to get the ball on down. <laughs> hey, man, Real Bravo Country Club is proud to partner with Victor Cook College Athletics and Golf Program. We invite you to visit and discover how we can make your Real Bravo lifestyle complete. 
I'm gonna come out with your bars. Okay. The <laughs> bars had an iconic West End too. Yes, he, he still does. I don't know if you've seen him on the Tiny Desk concert. He is 60 some years old and still amazing. First and 10 Renegades at their own 31 yard line. Yes. You hand it off. First time we've seen J Joystick Jalen. And up to number 29, Jalen Hankin. Picks up three yards and 34. On the tackle number five, Jaden Matthews. Amazing stop by that defense. You gotta capitalize. Pick up a three yards on the play. Second and six. I'd love to see an opportunity for a shot. Because you don't want to just get on here and think you're gonna just run the clock out. You already know you got guys that can get behind them in that secondary. We've seen that with Pointer already if you come out with the shotgun spread set off the trip. Now go back to that rocket screen again. I love it. Great successful play. I go past the way to number two, Jacoby Pointer. Eight targets so far. On the stop, of the number zero, Seven Jack Gentile, and number five, Jake Matthews. And again, we got Gentil on the tackle. Brings up third. Game three are tough to play. The 37 and four at the 37 yard line. You know, again, this is what I'm talking about. You have to get this first down because if not, you're putting right back to a team who's been very consistent offensively. Shotgun spread set. Three and a half minutes to play in this second quarter. My goes. Nice out route. I go number two, Jacoby Pointer. A first down Porter. for the Renegades on third down. Run out of bounds by number 35, James Vasquez. First down, Renegades in their own 47 yard line. Smith, the Indianapolis Colts. Yes, Syracuse North. That kid was a player that you could throw it to him 16 times and he's going to end up with 12 catches. And I that might not be called may have been tipped or something. I used to love watching him play on that track at the carrier zone as well, too. He was fast. We looked like we had a guy lined up in the neutral zone right there for, for the Bulldogs. Well, the Second time that's happened tonight is on call. As Jalen Hankin gets it three yards up to the 50 yard line, second seven. Gain of three on the play. Second down and seven at the 50 yard line. I don't wonder what's going on with him. He's been very successful. Haven't seen David Smith yet. Right now, Joyce Kick Jalen the corner. Getting it done. Second and seven. Jalen in the backfield behind Icoa. Takes the handoff to Hankin. Right there, look like that was just two different blockers that didn't know it, that were in miscommunication and it allowed number eight. On the stop, number eight. Reynolds, Reynolds UT. Reynolds UT, I should say. And Reynolds got past both number 69, Titus Yepes, and number 18, CJ Tolbert. What I do like is that he didn't try to force it. Too many. Time out. Down to fight. Two minutes left. 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 Two for more information, please visit us at www.tyf.org or so you can find us at Facebook at Golden Empire Football. Do you need new floors in your home? Carved out less plus has huge in stock selection of carpet car surface to do from. Carved out less plus will never run them all in place. We're a camera day and seal day. And this piece of work is brought to you by Valley Strong Credit Union. Thank the Valley Strong Credit Union to find out how you can grow your possibilities. I feel like a kid in the candy store there just watching, watching the process. Again, Kathy Wilson Jones as well too. Fantastic track athlete. Not only there, but on the Javelin as a president of state. She had a good dynamic interview and then her speech. Um, again, like uh, Vance Baum was saying, me too. Pointer gets his football and that looks like that'd be a face mask. And it's going to be a first down for the Renegades. So a big penalty now going to the, you know, at the benefit of the Renegades. If this is going to be a face mask, he 
First of all, defense. Why are you running it? 15-yard penalty. Come in and run. First down. Correction. 93. By doing that, we get the penalty. Now it's first and 10. Minute 54, man. at the 40 yard line. Whistles on the play. Okay. I can't hear you. We can't either. <laughs> You're the head referee down on the field. <laughs> Telling his, his crew he can't hear. Coach a little John on the sideline with one of the head lines. Right. Please reset the clock to 154. The clock will start on the snap. Well, I think what was happening was is that the clock started, and it was a penalty. Typically, the clock stopped, and it, and it goes on the snap. So, good job by Coach Littlejohn for pointing that out. Again, Igoa gets a pass out to Sunday. Sunday will brought down immediately. Pass completes to number 88, Devin Sutton. Catch. To catch that, knowing you're going into Off the tackle, number 35, James Vasquez. Man, Devin always get talked about about his speed, man. That's some toughness right there. That is. Right on that. Second and five. Got tackled right in the gut. I go up, looks up, and we got penalty flags. Oh! <laughs> I go up. Was, looks like somebody was trying to strip him from behind right there. No, it's number eight. Is, uh, Reynolds Uti. That's dangerous because he's hacking at his throwing arm. Right, oh, and so I go and toss the football. Five yard penalty. So we got a five yard penalty before the snap against the Renegades, and that basically negates the five yard pickup for Sunrim, making it second and ten with a minute 29 in the second quarter. How big is it for the Renegades to be able to put some points on the board going into halftime? Man, it just shows the, the, the value of, of great defense to get stops. Like I always tell people, hey, when it comes down to offense and defense, we won't lose the game if we don't let people score. The worst thing can happen is we tie them, <laughs> right? Be 0-0 zero, zero out here. Do our job and we won't lose. That's, that's my motto. Do our job and we won't lose. I don't care if it's 3 0. Our, our kicker, okay, Brian please Parker reset the clock to 134. There was a 10 second option for a runoff. For the win. The biggest the field the has game, elected to take the timeout. So that would be a first time you know, timeout for the half. Like that in Arkansas, where our offense, we were in a veer offense, and sometimes it just didn't work. We didn't throw the ball a lot. And we had games where we won. Fans, be sure to stay connected like with Renegade Athletics on YouTube, Facebook, yeah, X, and Instagram. Search Go so Game Show to play. We just, we held them to three points all game. And we were able to win. Like, hey, this one is for every parent who knows every word of their kids' favorite cartoon. You know, a lot of times, coaches will talk about it. Coaches will talk about it. You can talk about it. Yeah, you can talk about it. 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 You can talk Hey, just like that old song from the 60s, though. You say you got to make an ugly woman your wife. <laughs> hey, you know, I mean, all jokes aside. You want to be happy for the rest of your life. Now we're going to make a pretty good for your wife. We're going to be in trouble, man. We ain't talking about our wives. No, we're absolutely not. That's a song. <laughs> not my song. I didn't like it. All right. My wife, first, my wife probably listening to this at the rest now. Second and Happy two. birthday, honey. Happy birthday, birthday to the white. All right, check with me before I go. We're going to get Robbie set. Here we go. Minute 34. The timeout for the Renegades. Pass is out to the sidelines. Going to get out of bounds. Pick up about four yards. Devin Sundgren. Pass complete to number 88, Devin Sundgren. Little bro. I love the fact that he's getting this target. Double by Jake Matthews. Because he's running these outs, and a lot of these guys have no idea. Give him two on the play, right third down and eight at the 38 yard line. See how deep that safety is, he must know. Third and eight. Now we don't have a deep safety. 
Now we've got some risk that seconds and counting down. Renegades are going to have a fourth and long. Well, the tackle number 91. And here's where we're going to see if Jack Smith is still available here. So let me lay a seal on me. We're going to have number 58 out to attempt to punt. That's Carlos Villa. Four down the game at the 27 yard line. Let's see what you got. 55, Aiden Eggers out there from Big Christian in the deep snap. On the punt, number 58, Carlos Diaz. Like I said, I didn't go to the game. It sounds like the drillers were up. Timeout. Bakersfield. That's their second shot. Well, if you were uh, following uh, Driller Great and uh, former. Back to receive for the Bulldogs, number three, Makai Puga. So Via gets a left footed kick and it is straight up in the air. And that is not going to be a good kick at all. Gets the ball to the 33 yard line. So a 14 yard punt. And good thing that there's only 12 seconds on the clock. Ball spotted out of bounds at the Bulldogs 33 yard line. Twelve seconds left to go yeah, in the first half. Bulldogs are going to have to come up with something, but they still have three timeouts. All right, but Renegade Rob did not say how hard it is to be a punter. Here comes our backup kicker in having to do it, not even realizing he's going to have to do it tonight, and he shanks his first one. It is so hard. That's why they call specialists, punters, field goal kickers, place kickers, and holders, long snappers as well. That's a specialty position. Everybody can't do that. And they don't get the respect that they deserve, so that's why I'm the guy that makes sure to give it to them every week. Because that's that. That's the end of the first half. The, the right score: the Bakersfield College Renegades 14, the Allen Hancock Bulldogs 14. It really cost the Renegades much because the Bulldogs decided to kneel on the football to get into the locker room. And so after one half of play, the Bulldogs and the Renegades, as expected, played a very tight ball game, tied 14-14 right here. Homecoming 2024, we're going to take a timeout. We'll be back with a little bit of halftime action here in just a little bit on Kirby's Talk Game 1180. 96.1 FM, live streaming on GoGames.com. Renegade football fans, we are back here for the opening kickoff. Here at Homecoming 2024, Rob Chavez alongside Hall of Famer Kenny Calvin and the non mayonnaise appreciation of Dr. Julian Wilson over here. We'll talk about that in a little bit. As ball taken at the 10 yard line, that's number three, Makai Puga. Puga again gets up to his own sideline and is knocked out of bounds. This is the second time you've seen Julian, Julian Smith. Knock him out of bounds past the 40 yard line. Yeah, and it's horrible kickoff coverage. We're getting out of our lanes on the right hand side, sucking ourselves in. And, and this film is going to be a, a, a run a thon, a marathon of how many laps they're going to have to run from this poor kickoff coverage. Allen Hancock ball their own 46 yard line, first and 10. Coaches are going to look at this film as disgusted as Julian looks at an egg salad sandwich. <laughs> Man, we going to. They go right back number to two. that ISO. You got number two, Gaten Harris tackle. bounces it out of bounds, out of, outside of the tackles, but Phoenix Tusa stays on it alongside of Aaron Martinez for a two yard loss. That was great pursuit right there. That's where they actually stayed in their lanes. Yes, I mean, we just got to grab cloth when you're tackling guys, man. Too many times you see guys Bounce. trying to blast a guy like you hit stick and I'm on Madden. This ain't Madden, man. Wrap up and grab cloth. Oh, and we got another, another esteemed guest. We got old Trevor Horn in the house. What up? And we got a little horn right behind him. I formation sprint set and they're going right back to the edge. Great tackle. Nine. 
Brian on the tackle. Got number nine this time stepping up. We haven't heard uh, Tyler Lewis's name. Tyler's been very active all throughout the year. Finally getting clocked into the game. Pickup of a yard for the Bulldogs, third and 11 from the 45 yard line. You see, you see them taking advantage of those swing routes and turning those swing routes into wheel routes. You got to be very disciplined and fast flow as a defense. What are we? What kind of coverage are we seeing right here from the defensive backs? I mean, right now it looks like you got on with a quarters coverage with these two deep safeties, but now you're dropping it down, so it's like a man coverage. So respecting the flats and being able to contain it, or at least try to contain it right there, as D'Antonio Hackworth gets another tackle as Will Kanavalov was unable to get the tackle at a, what would have been about a yard pickup, ends up picking up about six on the play, but either way, the Bulldogs are going to elect to punt. This will be a, a very opportunistic time for them to take a fake, too. With, yep, this, it, kind of, with yep. this kind of field position, fourth and four. They look, look, look what they're going to do ahead. The one Ball spotted at the Renegade 48-yard line. Punter for the Bulldogs. Standing back and nearly a, a block kick. And I tell you what, he has had some low laser fill, or excuse me, punts today. Big guy, number 49, Jordan Orchid. Hey, on Orchid's actually a town out near Santa Maria. It's a small little, a small little town. It's actually gotten a little bit bigger because of the wine industry out there. But that'd be like somebody with the last name of, you know, Taft or something. Right, right. I mean, and sometimes those are family legacy names as yeah, well, too. Yeah. But he is from Paso Robles, just up the road. Now we see Jalen Hankins out of Liberty High checking in. Joystick Jalen. Let's see if we can get him involved in the passing game as well. Vince Igoa out of the shotgun. Hands the ball off to Hankins. Hankins got a lot of room. He's got a good Ooh. block. Good block by C.J. Tolbert and then... Jalen Hankins lowers the boom. Man, he's such a deceptively powerful runner on that power play. But how about the blocking? The whole left side of the offensive line, along with Tober, baby jelly roll. That was just was about seven yards for anybody touched. So first down for the Renegades at the 31-yard line. Hankins picked up 11 on that. Lowered the boom as number 25. Terrell Hardley at a Las Vegas high school. Jaylen. Got credit for the tackle, but really got laid out. And Jalen Hankins, once again, Hankins takes the a football. Gary. Picks up about seven yards on, on that. Top, nine. Actually making Miller. six. They marked it back another yard. So he's at the 37 yard line. Simplified Second running schemes where you're just putting the hat on the hat and moving guys. Go power left and then you go power right. Now you, see, now you see David Smith checking in the game, along with Jacoby Pointer. I want to say this may be only his second time in the backfield, and Smith, he's usually hungry when he gets in, second four. He does have one carry. David Smith, who I know Trevor Horn is very is, familiar with. He just said what up. And there he goes. He's got a lot of room. He probably heard that Trevor Horn was up here watching him, and he gets a big first down inside the 35-yard line of the Bulldogs. Big day. But we talked about how energized Smith is when he comes in the game. He usually has a big run on his first two carries. You called it. He said he was hungry. That was an amazing job. Man. Great vision with the blocking up front. Has been fantastic. His dad, you know, again, for those of you guys who were fans of sitcoms in the 90s, Martin and a character. And bruh, man. That was Dave Smith. Yep, bruh, man. Won. You got oh, they go Bubba. Bubba Nettles out of the backfield. He's got nothing but turf in front of him in the end zone. Touchdown, Bubba Nettles. Boom! We said Bubba as soon as he comes in, he always has an ability to be effective, too. These are two guys that sat on the sideline the whole first half. And consecutive carries get 50 yards. We talked about how fresh they were going to be coming out of the first half, and you almost think that this was kind of like a bit of a rope and dope type of a scheme here for the offensive uh, play calling and keeping those guys under wraps. And as soon as we get them on their heels, bam, here we go. David Smith for 23 yards. 
Bubba Nettles for another 30 plus. That has to be very frustrating when you're an individual player that can make those kind of plays and you sitting over there for 30 minutes and then your, your, your opportunity finally comes as we blow the PAT. So Carlos Villa had had about 12 consecutive plays, uh, excuse me, extra points that were good. And he broke that streak a couple of weeks ago against El Camino, had a couple more today and then he misses on that one. So 10-51 remaining in the third quarter, 20 to 14. The Renegades are up and we've got some unfortunate news from the sideline. On that coverage, Jack Smith tore his ACL. That's what's, that's what's the folks down there for Southern California Orthopedic Institute, one of our title sponsors here at Memorial Stadium. They got the team doctors down there and that they fear that that is a torn ACL. Yeah, that's that's unfortunate. You know, because he's been having a good season. You know, so it is, it's definitely tough to hear that news. But Carlos Villa kicks it off and into the end zone for a touchback. So Jack Smith's supposed replacement now for the rest of the season, he was able to get a touchback, and that is unfortunate. And, uh, you know, Jack Smith, you know, the only silver line to this is he ends the season with no punt return yardage. But, you know, I guarantee you, you ask him, you ask anybody, he's going to trade that in for being able to be out there healthy. But yeah, it didn't look good when he was having to be the guy who contained and brought – and possibly even – kept points off the board because he ran interference to be able to get the returner to be able to come right back into coverage. Yeah, I definitely agree. Here we go. Vele's pass is complete. He picks up about three yards up to the 28. That was complete to number 18, George Avalos. Tackled on the play by... Pass complete to number 18, We're going to hear from Titan Tom here. Who picked that? Number 21, Dantonio Hackworth. 21, Dantonio Hackworth. Fourth tackle of the Take game. Up a three yards on the play. Second down at seven. And those and are the tackles that you want to hear from Dantonio. Yes, I mean, Dantonio's been on his game. You got to make tackles inside. 11 on the tackle. And they're still pushing the pile. Got to get a whistle. That was Anthony yeah. Tucker. Ball came out. On the carry big number 77, Tucker. Jacob. Garbiso picked it up, but they already whistled forward progress being stopped. The ball's now at the 33. But if you watch Coach Little John on the sideline, he's saying you guys aren't blowing the whistle. I'll check it with you on the next one. Momentum is being stopped. They're going to get guys hurt if they don't get that whistle blow. Right now, it's a huge third down, third and two for the Renegades. Got to blow up for the even front. Pound fullback in the backfield. Oh, this oh it's blown up right there. Blown up. Great blitz right there. Josh Macon ran big time interference right there on that handoff. Great job by the defense. Forcing the punt again. So, big play right there on third down. Sets up a fourth and one for the Bulldogs. All they had to do was convert from a yard away, and they couldn't get it. So, now the punt unit is out for the Bulldogs. Back deep to receive Makai Smith standing at his own 29-yard line. Pressure on the punter, and he gets a nice spiraling kick. Well, we know what he can Return do at the 20. And there goes Makai Smith. Well, he can do with it. He's got a little bit of space. We know what he can He's do with it. He's at the 50, 45, 40, 35, 30. One man to beat. And he's not going to beat him. He's going to get knocked out of bounds. But a great return right there inside the 10 yard line. Man. Man. You know, with huge plays, we got some renegade legends come up to the Dammer deck. But as soon as that punt gets into Makai Smith, Makai, don't call me fight for Smith because I ain't act his hands. Just a huge playmaker. Made three guys miss near the 20, in between the 20 and 25 yard line, and took it for another 60 yards right up to the, right up to the five yard line of the Bulldogs. And this is the explosiveness that we've been waiting for out of this special teams. It's Kenny Calvin. Get some former Renegades greats up here. 
Man, we got and the great homecoming. legendary James McGill, one of the greatest safeties of all time. We got Michael Hall, Michael one of the Hall. top five interception from, guys of all time. Top from, five of from here, my that's from my era right there, Big Mike Hall. Twenty two. And up to number twenty two, hey, David Flynn from the Hill. Hey, the Hatcher Peak. I done played it in Jackal by number twenty nine. Many D one. Stadiums ain't nothing like this. No, absolutely. absolutely. You, said it, you said it best. As you hear McGill in the background, he's talking about nothing it's like playing at Memorial Stadium. I watched him play in the Big 12 in front of 80,000. There's nothing like it's playing. 101. 101. Yeah, 101. Correction. I, I shorter than 20,000. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but huge, huge opportunity for the Renegades, second and goal. Let's, for, let's not forget the fighting Illini over there, too. Huge game by the Fighting Illini knocking off Michigan today as we got Mike Hall in the house. And that's touchdown yeah. Renegade. Getting in the end zone Two. for another one. Two. Jacoby Pointer, player of the game. Boom! Another one. Jacoby Pointer, the most used Renegade throughout the night. He can do it inside from the back. He can do it outside as a wideout. He's one of the most explosive receivers I've seen in a long time. Touchdown and, game. You know, a couple of uh, – your back up about week three, when we seen Jacoby first get a carry out of the backfield, and we thought he was just going to be one of those – you know, third down receivers in the slot, and he was given a chance, and he's really taken advantage of it so far over the last four games. Wow, talk about putting on for a city. And right now, he, he's turning up individually, but how about I go? We, talk, we talked about his consistency and how things have been so hard for him to have a flow based on coming off the field. He's having a fantastic game of his own tonight. 13 of 14, and again, the uh, really the only the only incompletion that he has is because it was knocked out of his hand. Definitely, man. Great, great effort, but how about that ball? Just a quick slant route. You know, as, as DBs, you protect the inside shade and man cover, but when you're a speed guy like Pointer, you can eat that leverage up quick. That's one thing that you got three shooty game generals up here. Uh, you know, we, 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 we're taught to, to protect that inside shade as, as defensive backs. It's going to be help a read. Man. Hey, amazing job by the Renegades, 27-14. It's going to go out of bounds. That is going to be out of bounds. So Carlos Villa. Again, is brought into backup duty here, and he's he's the man. He's the man, not only kicking but punting. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. All right, y'all. All right, Jake. All top, sir. All top. Keep your phone on lock. You ain't too far behind. Yeah. Great job. Yo, we got some legends up here. You know, keep listening to us, man. Thank you, sir. One of the beauties of having guys like y'all up here in the booth. Is we always throwing your names out there anyway, just talking about the impact that y'all had individually on y'all years. And it's just beautiful to be part of the process. But we need to get the defensive, we need to get the defensive records at the end of the day. In the, in the program, right, we got right. all offensive records. Right, for right. weekend. That's, that's, that's my big cut. Yes, there you go. But, you know what I mean? Hashtag I that. I yeah. Make defensive stats ready to be. I'm more DB in the nation. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Man, exactly. This is the beauty of the coming. Love you guys. And I got I got my brother Trevor Horn in the booth. He was he was there on day one when I when I got the job. You needed You know, be, being there for me. You know, from a writer's perspective, he's always been in the booth with me from a broadcaster's perspective. So beautiful moment on this homecoming night with 805 to play in the third quarter. How about that? Yeah, 805. Car Carlos Villa, yeah, 805. <laughs> These guys are coming from the 805. We're in the form we're in the, we're in the former 805. As the ball's taken at the 10 yard line, that's boom. Oh. Makai. Finally stays in his lane and we're able to stop somebody at the 25. It looks like somebody finally got coached up down there. You know, we had, you know, Coach Van Horn was in the building only for about maybe a minute. He said he had to take off. But, uh, you know, those, those that was the exact thing that he would always coach and always preach. Just stay in your lane. And it's something that he even said it's advice for life. Right. And, 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 and what's so funny, the only reason you get out of your lane because you're trying to play hero ball. 
Like you usually get, you, you're What's usually that? getting out of your lane to try to do something you're not supposed no, to do anyway. Stay in your lane. Okay. So by, by the time we get to the next game, I'm gonna have a T-shirt that says "Stay in your lane." Man, and Kenny's gonna wear it. We're gonna pass out to number three, Makai Puga. You know, I didn't realize that we've got two different Makais on each side of the ball. They just spell their name a little bit different. All right, little Trev. Take care. You got his, we got his renegade ball. I'm not too sure. And he's heading down, but it's, you know, star steady night on the Denver day. Later, brothers. Take it All easy, right, Trevor. Guys. Be careful down got, Again, hills. Trevor Horn from the Kern High Network. We're all, we're all now uh, Kern High employees. Oh, oh. we got, oh. Nearly intercepted, but Finish actually it was, to number 83. was that Whoa, caught? David. That was going to be. Official going he's going to spot it. That's going to be incomplete. Yeah, he's at no. Okay. Wow. Incomplete. Yeah, okay. Well, so he got that through there, though. Yes, he did. And that was a tight window, to say the least. So, third and eight for the Bulldogs. And again, apologies for not keeping you folks up, you know, up to date and up to speed on the radio side of things. Like Kenny was saying, it's homecoming. We get a lot of guests up here. So we got 714 remaining, 27 third. 27-14, Renegades a big hit yeah, right Hackworth. there. D'Antonio Hackworth. Okay, you know, at the beginning of the game, saying that it's not always a good thing to hear his name, but tonight I don't mind it. But and he's everywhere he needs to be. He's making the play, and that's one of the hugest, most underestimated things from a corner's perspective is tackling. You have to be a sure tackler. I remember Joey giving me because, a compliment that I was a sure an island boy. Right, man. But, but, but you know, you got to be a sure tackler as well on the edge, and that was a great example of that. Wow. And that's, it guess who you got to punt it to? <laughs> Here we go. Oh. Ball out of bounds. Picked up at the 28 by Makai Smith. And Makai Smith is not going to get away this time. Nice tackle right there. By number 28, on the Odysseus Salavea from American Samoa. Wow, we talked Odysseus about the Bible. Salavea. Now we got the Iliad in the Odyssey. <laughs> yeah. Take it easy, Homer. <laughs> Odysseus. Yeah, see, if y'all went to English class, y'all know what we be talking about right now. <laughs> I, love you, that, I love that book. I wonder if... Uh, Homer was a fan of mayonnaise. <laughs> All these Crawford references. All right, first and 10, shotgun spread set, 620, 11 and third. A lot of time left, let's get some money. I'm gonna get you later. 31. <laughs> As you hear Dr. Julia Wilson say it, I'm gonna get you later. Again, we've got, we're gonna, have, we're gonna have, to have a live poll at one of these uh, games, mayonnaise or no mayonnaise, and see what the Renegades fans say. <laughs> right. So oh, I'm sure right. there's some people on Team No Mayo. Right, right. right. There's a bunch. <laughs> so, guys, look, we're, we're here at with 5.56 left to play in the third. It's 27-14. Imagine what the scoreboard would look like with all the, the, penalties. the dirty play that we had early yeah. in the penalties, man. And, again, what we talked about was the fact that the Renegades are a team of second-half adjustments, and even really after the first quarter they adjust. This ball is handed off Bubba. to Bubba Nettles. Nettles Bubba. bounces it out. He's at the 46-yard line. First down for the Renegades. Man, Bubba is such a powerful Tackle runner. Out of bounds, and you made a great point earlier where it seems to be very strategic that coaches are playing certain guys at certain points of the game because they're fresh and they're running like it. Yeah. And Bubba Nettles has that build of a kind of like an Eric Dickerson – a uh, an Eddie George, if you will, just you know, tall, lean, gets those legs up, gets those knees up, and is able to run north south really when he needs to, as he shows right there as he picks up 12 yards. They're gonna hand the ball off, and he bounces out once again and gets upfield to the 50. Pick up a four to be second and six. Smart vision because he's as he gets it on that power play, he's looking to bounce it outside, but once he knows he doesn't have it, he sticks the foot in the ground and gets up the field and turns it into a five yard, four to five yard game. Playing running back, you don't always have to be the most athletic, fast guy. You have to have great decision making. And that was a great job putting that foot in the ground, second and six.
All right, so we got to stop at your play. It's going to be a timeout on the field. So it'll, give us, it'll give us an opportunity to take a quick timeout here on Current News Talk Game 1180, 96.1 FM, and com. All right, we are back here on the Dameron Deck at beautiful Bakersfield College Memorial Stadium. Rob Chavez, Hall of Famer Kenny Calvin. And again, we were just told about how great of a stadium this is by James McGill, you know, former renegade, fantastic uh, All-American here back in the early 2000s. So we got Vince Igoa, looks up and his pass is going to be complete to Jacoby Pointer, number Jalen Jalen Richmond this time. Talk about the ball, though. Just another great, great ball. ball. Y'all going to be tired of hearing us say that tonight because this boy is letting it fly. Wow. Talk about showing up for your big bro, Jalen Richmond. That's what I'm talking about. We've been talking about this all week. This receiver core overall is just showing out right now. Kai Smith, you know, he's had to make his plays on special teams because his other two uh, wide receiver corpsmen, are out there making some big plays. We got an eye formation. Ball handed off to Bubba Nettles, and he's gonna get in the end zone for the touchdown. Boom! Another one. I'll tell you what. Call this Hurricane Renegade because <laughs> in the second half, this offense has just come out sprinting and hammering this Bulldog defense with three touchdowns. Renegade Rob, you my little bro. We've known each other before this experience. But I got to give credit where credit is due. You you talked about how all year we've been a second half team, and that's been the thing that frustrates me. Is if we get off the bus ready to go, we can smack people all over the place, but we're not turning the motor on until we see some adversity. You know, again, I was talking about the fact that Jesse and I are in a text group of a bunch of Dodger fans, and the same thing goes for the Dodgers. We scored in the first couple of innings. And at that point, you give it to the bullpen and they're gone. Right. Same thing right over here. You put some points on the board, you demoralize the other team. You got a defense on you know that, that that's here in Bakersfield College that is second to none. Man, man, I reflect back on my renegade experiences. So, you know, we still go live out my glory days this week, right? <laughs> hey, it's Hall of Fame week. Hall of Fame, right? It's Hall of Fame week. Reflecting on my team, my freshman year with George Jones. We were, we were putting 50 up on people in the second quarter to the point to where we're not even playing no more the, the whole second half of the game. We having a party. We, we throwing a party at halftime because it's a wrap already. You know, and when guys, guys like Hernan Santiago play. play a linebacker, I mean, we should have knocking down with some. So, so, you know, that's, that's the beauty of executing. And again, we're squeezing. Got to make the play. So it was a short kick up to the 20 and taken for about 16 yards. Down number, 43, James number 43, James Moon gets another special teams tackle. We hear some some cheers down below from James. You know, it's just beautiful to see things start clicking. How about that? I want to know what halftime speech my big cousin, uh, <laughs> Coach Little John, gave, man. Because right now we are, are rolling with 20 unanswered points in the third quarter. Bottle that up and sell it, whatever he told them. And the Renegades have shown that they can score in bunches. They've had as many as 36 points in a, in a quarter so far this year against San Bernardino Valley. We've got number two, Caden Harris. Runs up the middle for about seven yards. Xander Polito. Xander Polito. At a Taft high, it's tackle. And three at the 43 yard line. You know, one, one of the things that I learned today that I didn't know as well about our coaching staff is that we have one of our frat brothers, the legend Dwayne Cantrell. He's a reverend, and he's 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 there to help us be more mentally focused, man. You can see that focus in the second half. Now we got yeah. a penalty flag as number two, Caden Harrison. Caden Harris has two oh, stiff ten, arms. This is going out of bounds. Ten. Tucker. Excuse me, this is number 10, Tucker on the carry. Hey, that's how you finish a run at the number 8. Or the eight, 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 number 10. Or number 10. That was number. I'm going to get some glasses Five. one day. Five. 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 <laughs> I got my book out. <laughs> number 12. 15 yard penalty from the end of run. Wow. Down. Oh, wow. That's a huge one. All right. That is a big penalty right there that gets. 
that gets the Bulldogs in a plus territory at the 35 yard line. One of the things that the Renegades had done is kept them behind the 50 yard line so far in the first half since the first time in Renegade territory. You know, Cannibalov is one of those players playing with high intensity. You gotta be careful to keep your hands right. Eye formation for Hancock. Right next to Cannibalov is Jack Provencal checking in that. the game. Caden Harris gets gets the football and he's gonna get forced out of bounds after a big run. Jaden Hollis in on the tackle. Gets the ball up to the 18 yard, like 17 yard carry. Right How many times have Run I talked about zero, giving up containment tonight? Like that was, it looked like a high school attempt by the defensive First line, just allowing him to reach block you and seal that right side off. I mean, I know those are some huge guys, but it's about technique and discipline beating them to the spot. If you're faster than them, you can beat them to the spot and force that back in. First and 10 for the Bulldogs. 10, Tucker gets the football and he's inside the five yard line. First down for the Bulldogs with goal to go. Jaden Hollis again with a tackle. And again, now we're hearing Jaden Hollis's number zero. That's for you, math no money, man. It's not a number, but when we hear him, that's not really good as he's making tackles after 10, 12, 17 yards. Yeah, right now, this is all big boy ball. It's going to be about hats on a hat inside the trenches. High formation. Ball given to Caden Harris. And Harris, is, it looks like he's going to score it touchdown. in for the touchdown. Uh, number two, so the Harris Bulldogs the answer pretty fast. Didn't take very long to put up a touchdown on the scoreboard. That was very quick because we were just talking about with, with about four minutes left. Has the potential to put this game on ice. Just a great answer by the Bulldogs. Two minute and two minutes and a second ran off the clock. They got the ball with 3:53 remaining and just drove it right down. Of course, the, that penalty for 15 yards only helped out the Bulldogs be able to put up that touchdown. The extra point is good, bringing it 34-21 for the Renegades. Again, that was just one of those things where, you know, let the foot off the gas pedal like just like you were saying. Yeah, and, and since I was playing Hancock, they're a team that you can't do that against because they're going to fight all the way to the end. I, I, as we were in this reflection mode, let's get these reflections out of the way. My sophomore year against Allen Hancock, we beat them 50 to 48. I'm going to say it again. 50 to 48 in regulation. And we won the game on my 48-yard fake punt touchdown catch. They had to go to the trigger. We had we we couldn't stop them. They couldn't they couldn't stop us. When they finally did stop us, we ran the fake punt, and I scored a 48-yard touchdown from Brian Walker on the pass. My punter ended up throwing it. To win the game against my buddy Troy Ocho. Speaking of the uh, speaking of kickers that you played with, seen Chad Hathaway at the Olympic oh, Park. Has to go, man. That's my bro, man. I had to Love that dude. give him a little bit of a hard time. I'll tell you why. As, as we get a ball taken by D'Antonio Hackworth at the 13 yard line, and Hackworth gets the ball number up to the. Bubba yeah, excuse me, that was Bubba Nettles, number 31. Takes the ball up to the 26. Uh, Chad Hathaway was. Uh, down Talking to a gentleman Ryan that Montague. had known him before, maybe introduced himself before, but Chad looks over at the guy who has his name on his shirt, yeah. and he goes, okay, yeah, what was your name again? And I looked over at Chad, I said, Chad, the name is right on his shirt. He goes, yeah, I'm 48 years old, man. <laughs> yeah, shout yeah, out no, to no, he don't He don't have the uh, CTE concussion issues like we had. He didn't get hit as much. <laughs> No, he's just gonna blame that on uh, old age and poor vision. Man, that's all that business. Man. Man. Chad got Bulldog billions of dollars worth of uh, yes, he does. Yes, to, yes, to yes, think yes, about. He yes, can't he remember does. your name. Yeah. And again, shout out to Chad. Chad's a, a, a big time donor of Bakersfield College Athletics here. He also gives back to uh, the programs right here on campus, but never really says. You, that you he, wouldn't know it. Yeah. I mean, he's a water polo dad. I mean, he's, he's a... Uh, hey, water polo stand up. Yeah, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a person that moves with silence. One thing I've learned about the boss's environment is that you don't have to do a lot of talking when you're the big dog. So 
So we got first and 10 from the 26 yard line. Igoa 22. gets the ball out to number 22, David Smith. Nice, Dave. Dave Smith gets the ball up about five yards to the 30. Actually, we'll call it four yards, about the 29 the yard line. Smith. Last time Dave Smith touched the ball, he got a little over 25 yards. That set up Bubba Nettles' touchdown on the very next play. I like how balanced the offense has been. We've, we've been intermediate, we've been short, we've been long, we've been deep, we've been running the ball. You know, everything seems to be working. Coaches are using it to their advantage, second and six. And it just goes to show you that, uh, you know, the, the amount of tricks in the playbook of offensive coordinator Seth Dameron. His ball is passed out to C.J. Tolbert, and Tolbert has enough for the Renegade first down. Ball's, jelly roll. Ball's, ball spotted at the 29 for a 10-yard carry, or 10-yard pass. Tolbert run out of bounds by number 35, James Vasquez. Like you mentioned before, Seth Dameron, last time, last time that Hancock and Bakersfield College played in the stadium, he was the winning coach on the other sideline. This time it's Rick Aguilar, a longtime assistant at Hancock just before the pandemic. He was on the sideline for 15 years as an assistant coach, now the head coach after Seth Dameron. It's like Goa, steps up in the pocket, he looks over, he's got a man, that's Tolbert once again. Up the sideline, he's forced out of bounds, though. Otherwise, he has a possible 40 yards in front of him. But we do have a penalty on the play. Up is roughing the passer. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's going to be it's in the we'll area. Get that 15 on the end of our run like they got last time. You know, kudos to these officials. They've done a fantastic job tonight. I saw Big Landis down there with the rest of the guys. Shout out to Steve Lynch, the statistician, and the team down downstairs at Alicia. Personal foul. Defense right number eight. I didn't get to really Plus see the this week at the Hall of Fame. From the end of run, automatic. Experience, you know, man, going back to Hall of Fame Wednesday, man. It's just, a, just such a beautiful night, man. Yeah, and, and kind of in goose bump mode all week. And shout out to the crew, um, you know, Lori Ambrose, Todd Hansen. Our athletic director, Reggie Bolton, who uh, put on a fantastic, fantastic event. Of course, the MC, Man, Vance Palm, amazing job. as always, does a fantastic job. After the 15-yard rough in the passing penalty, gets the ball down to the 25-yard line, and that'll be it for the third quarter. The Renegades put up three touchdowns in that quarter and have taken a 34-21 lead over the Allen Hancock Bulldogs. Take a break on Current News Talk AM 1180, 96.1 FM, and live streaming on GoGames.com. All right, welcome back to Bakersfield College Renegades football as we go into the fourth quarter against the Allen Hancock Bulldogs. Renegades have a 34-21 lead. Rob Chop is alongside Hall of Famer Kenny Calvin. Igoa fakes a pass, rolls to his right. He's got a man, but he's going to throw it right into the dirt, right in the feet of C.J. Tolbert. And again, Vince Igo is showing a lot of maturity right there. He had a really good completion percentage right there. He just threw it in the dirt. Yeah, yeah, and, and you're definitely not worried about numbers, just worried about decisions. He's, he's making some quality decisions tonight. And I think sometimes standing on the sideline and watching another guy have a go at it can help you get your focus improved. Look like what's happening, second and ten. Well, Bakersfield second College has been playing football for over 100 years, and, you know, Vince Igoa is going to be, you know, maybe one of a, just a certain number of, uh, of quarterbacks is number 22. David Smith takes the ball up seven yards to the 18-yard line. That has had a 300-yard passing game in their first season. Oh, right, you know, 302 yards so far, four touchdowns. It's a wow. big game right there for Vince Igoa. Huge game with 14 left to play. He can get another 100 yards. Again, we'll have to take a look and see if we have Eight a record book play. around Third here that talks three. about most passing Eight yards in a single line. game. Again, it's traditionally Bakersfield College a running football team, running football program. A lot of the greats, David Turner, Michael Gray, oh. as David Smith's pass, excuse me, David Smith drops the football. Don't know if it was, was a, a pass lateral. or a lateral. So that ball was recovered by the Bulldogs at wow. the 30-yard line. And you see Coach Seth Dameron. 
throw his play card down. And so now Coach Littlejohn is pleading over there with the linesman trying to figure out if that was the right call or not. I, I'm not on that line, but you can't ever leave that in the official's hands. You have to get on the football. We don't do it, and that's gonna be first and ten for the Bulldogs. And we talked about them not they're not gonna give up. You gotta you gotta euthanize them, uh Bulldogs, man. <laughs> Aren't we a no kill county? <laughs> Back to that ISO again. Great job inside, but he bounces <coughs> in. Caden Harris bounces off, like you said, Great but a nice little reach attack. Or, or no, that's, that's David Stevenson. Stevenson. Wow. Yeah. On the carry number two, Caden Harris. Amazing tackle by the Brought corner, by Stevenson. 20, David Stevenson. Because if he doesn't make that, he's still running. Pick him a five on the point. Especially with Caden Harris' Second speed. I mean, he's showing some explosiveness out there. You might want to put him next to Devin Sunger to see who's going to run faster. I got money on my little bro, Devin Sucker, all day long. <laughs> Twins left for the Bulldogs. Counter. Tucker. Great play. Oh. Nice tackle. And a nice tackle, five. like you said. And Will Cannibalov and Danny Johnson with the tackle. Five, Danny he was missed and opportunity five. in the backfield as Will a defensive Cannibal. line gets great penetration, but not able to make the tackle. So here we go. This is what Bakersfield College has been doing really well tonight. Bulldogs only two of eight on third down so far. As you hear Hell's Bells on the PA system here, we're going to see if the if the Renegades can force a punt here. As we got a draw play to Caden Harris, and Harris is wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. Great tackle by Will Cannibalov. Getting around his ankles. And that's why he got that C on his chest, baby. He ain't a captain out there for that coin toss for nothing. Those are the kind of plays that you get that opportunity from. So 12 and a half minutes to play in the game, and the Bulldogs are keeping their offense out there at their own 38 yard, 37 yard line. They gotta get to the 40. We're working left to right on the live stream and on your dial. Gotta watch the snap. I think this is just a uh, hard count situation here. Oh, and they go with it. So, Vele rolls out in a quick slant, excuse me, an out route over there to Makai Puga. Puga's having a fantastic Makai game Puga. for them, but you just gotta be disciplined as a defender. Big fourth down conversion right there. That They were 0 of 1, so now they're 50% on fourth down conversions. That was a gutsy Pick call. The on the play, first down for the Bulldog, Bulldog coaching staff. At their own 45 yard line. Chris Gaines let him off the hook. It's one of those things where they got a guy that knows that has been making plays today, and they're gonna go to their playmaker. Yeah, Puga's having a fantastic game. Twins left, I formation. Caden Harris picks up about a yard. And up number two, Caden Harris. Second down and nine. Tackle by number 43, for the James Moon. I like what I see defensively inside. We haven't done a great job keeping containment, but our secondary is playing phenomenally right now. I'm gonna knock on a little piece of paper for some wood. But right now, I don't think they can beat us in deep. We just gotta play consistent up front and make some tackles. Second and nine. Here they go, they're trying so to take Vele, a shot. So Vele's got a pass complete and Right there, I don't know if Danny Johnson just lost where his receiver was, but it kind of took his eye off of him. And number seven, Dalen Latisi, bro, just broke that route off. Yeah, he, he, he had him covered, and then when the quarterback pump fakes it, his eyes go to another direction. Just a great job by that quarterback improvising to get his guy open. That's what you call Bulldogs throwing them up. First and ten. Twins left for the Bulldogs. Here comes that counter again. Caden Harris. Again, he's got a lot of line. space out there, and he's going to get forced out of bounds. How many times do you allow yourself to give up containment when you know they want to bounce it? You have to force that guy back. Inside, if you're the outside defender, run out of bounds at the 24 yard they run line. that counter play about seven times, and I want to say they average averaging about 10 yards a pop on it. And 
I, I said we, there was only two Makai's out there. This is, that is another Makai out there, Makai Sot, number 58, 62330. And that's who Caden Harris is hitching his wagon to right there. He's able to get that one lead block and then boom, bust it out. First down for the Bulldogs. Ball given to Tucker. Tucker pulls his way over a couple oh, of guys. Goodness. Still on his feet. And there he goes for a touchdown. He was able to bounce off of two renegades and then run right past Josh Macon. Macon thought he was he was taken down and doesn't even wrap up. How many times have I said that tonight? Wow. You're trying to hit stick this guy, and this dude is running through you and embarrassing you. You got to grab cloth. If anything, you dragging me to the end zone with you, but I'm going to be hanging on. You're not wrapping up, and that's why you're getting embarrassed. Anthony Tucker, 5'10", 215, out of Wilmington, North Carolina. Yeah, what do you got? We're right back in the game. Number 12, Chris wow. And I tell you, just like and we'll, we'll wait for this extra point attempt right over here as a snap, hold, and kick are all good. You know, these are things that, you know, growing up, listening to, you know, the great Chick Hearn and Stu Lance, that right there was a 14-point switch. They would always talk about it and how that could change momentum. Because the Renegades were driving. They were down at their own, they were down at the Bulldog 27-yard line when David Smith wasn't able to come up with that lateral pass. They recovered it at the 30-yard line. 70, uh, 70 yards later, we've got a one-score ball game right here, 34-28, but 9.42 remaining. We were talking about already the Renegades putting their foot on their throat and being able to take that kill shot, and here we go. Yeah, and, and we also talked about how you got to make sure you take them out because they're going to keep fighting. And, you know, I, I, Francis used to always tell me, hey, Ken, you don't have to validate anything you're saying to the audience <laughs> because... I mean, yeah, we know what we're talking about up here, and we just hate to see it happen. We said what was going to happen if you don't execute, and this is what's happening. Now they go with the short pooch. You got to get, you got to catch that football. You let that so bounce. Jacoby That's Pointer, dangerous. and Pointer was able to make a couple guys miss. Still on his feet. We got a penalty flag over here, way away from the return. Way away. Down by number 43. Roman Morales That's going to set us up for some unfortunate field position. And with a six point lead, you got to execute here. Touchdown beats you. Yes, 9.33 to play, but you, you got to get that mojo back. There's multiple fouls on the play. Offside, kicking team. Okay. Number 30. That was the flag. Cody, number 42 on the returning team. The kick. Penalty's offset. Re-kick. Yep. So fortunate for the Renegades. That that holding penalty would have put us back inside the 20-yard line. Bonehead mistake by the Bulldogs being offside because they, they definitely would have won that advantage. If you're these up backs, you know, you got Smith, and you, I believe, uh, on the other side, it might be uh, the other Smith. Yeah, looks like we got Makai Smith. Makai Smith is an up back. We got Jacoby Pointer on the other side. Back deep is Bubba Nettles gotcha. standing at the 12. So there you go. Bubba's taking it at the 10. Nice oh, block. Oh, great block. Oh. And you know, again, Bubba Smith, or Bubba Nettles. Not Bubba Smith, not not legendary Bubba Smith, but Bubba Nettles gets the ball up. By number 40, Adrian Mondol. Past the 35-yard line. Just goes north-south on that one. Yeah, so that penalty or the free kick earned us about six more yards. It's going to be interesting to see what approach our offensive coordinators, Coach Dean and Coach Dammer, do to attack this already scorched secondary of Hancock. Hancock's in this quarter's coverage look. It's a shotgun spread set for the Renegades. 
Bubba. Nettles runs it up the middle for three yards. Gets the ball to about the 39-yard line. 9-15 and counting. It's the Renegades. Again, we're looking to be able to have another, another score to make it a three-score game. They got that unfortunate fumble, and now they're just trying to be able to make sure that they're playing good clock management. So we just talked about the old Logan Bowers. We're going to have to get in that conversation quick. The okay. Renegades complete one right here. It's a great pass right there. A big hit. Jalen Richmond able to hold on to the football, even though he was popped right there. Ball spotted at the 48-yard line of the Bulldogs. First down for the Renegades. Hey, so quick shout out to my Washita Baptist University Tigers in Arkansas as they knock off number one Harding. Who we just talked about because our game. linebacker Logan Bowers had went there. Huge win for OBU. Maybe wow. if Logan, maybe if Logan's there, they don't <laughs> they get that win. Yeah, we've been looking out, Lil B. They didn't deserve you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> First and ten, Renegades. I go out of the shotgun. Bubba. Hands the ball to Bubba Nettles. Nettles has another first down, and he's got a big gain on that, about 17 yards down to the 30. Call it 18 yards down to the 30-yard line. First down, Renegades, eight minutes to play in the game. Man, I'm, I'm still going reflecting glory days. These, these running backs remind me of the days when we had a running back room with George Jones, Michael Gray, and Sean Lane, and Tommy Kreiner. My first freshman year, year four guys that can take it the distance every time to get it. First and ten. This running back room is real loaded here at Bakersfield College. We see an audible being Look called like in. They called the Mac Dre right there. <laughs> <laughs> Nettles once again on a sweep. He's going to get to the sideline and Number just in about the twenty-four yard line. So let's call it a gain of six, maybe seven. About second and Pick three. Seven on the play. Second down and three. Gotta and love how the offensive line. coordinator for offensive line and the whole unit is just finding a way to get positive yardage plays. Second and three for the Renegades. Looking like they're not in a huge hurry. Of course, with the lead going in. We were here last time and had the lateral. Gotta execute in the, as we approach the red zone. So just under seven minutes to play. Igoa, let's go have an end around right there to Makai Smith. Smith is still on his feet, and he's going to get pushed out of bounds at the 20-yard line. But that's going to be good enough for the first down. He actually stayed on his feet and just kind of stayed there, kept his feet moving, and scored it past the 21. That's, that's all they needed to get to. How about the design on that play? You look like you're running that power or that tall sweep. And you sneak that guy back in on the shovel pass in the round. That would be an incomplete pass if he doesn't catch that. Not a fumble. So Igoa is another completion for Igoa. His completion percentage is fantastic. Shades of Rich Gannon back in 2000. Bubba. We got Bubba Nettles reverse his course, and he's going to be able to pick up at least a yard to the 19-yard line. So back inside the Bulldog red zone. And really, the biggest part of this drive right over here is that they're knocking time off the clock. They got the ball with about nine and a half minutes to play. They're now under six. Right. I mean, and as you continue to execute and can get first downs, you continue to put these guys to sweep. Touchdown, it would be a nice exclamation point after you run some clock off. Twins right with an H-back. Pistol formation for Igoa. Nice blocking up front. Ooh, a nice run up the middle by Jacoby oh, Pointer. And Pointer's got enough for another renegade yeah, first down to the 10-yard line. First and goal. Wow, amazing job. I'm just so impressed yeah, four, with the offense, two, man. This is what I, I would call NyQuil first down, renegade offense. The you know, you really just putting putting them to sleep. Doesn't mean anything if you can't finish drives, though. You have to finish the drive and execute. First and goal from the 10. 22's in. Twins right. David Smith 
A lone setback behind I go out of the shotgun. Richmond in motion. Richmond with nice a lead block. block. Richmond. David Amazing Smith block by James close Richmond. to a touchdown. Gets down about the one yard line. That's what I'm talking about, eight. How about the block by the receiver? You motion him in from the outside, and he's basically playing Here's fullback now. That's not a fun job if you're a receiver that don't got some heart to Absolutely. come in here and shuffle in to play fullback and be the lead blocker on the outside backer. Great job, Jay Rich. Normally, guys like that usually got a neck roll on them. Right. <laughs> no neck roll right there. Words of Method Man, the Supreme Neck Protector. <laughs> As we got, now, David Smith, double deuce into the end zone for the touchdown. Boom! I don't know if I've seen a running back core this balance since 1994. It's been a long time. This is this that was a clinic right there, Renegade Rob. Everybody got a touch. You couldn't key on anybody. You got Pointer coming in. You got Bubba Nettles. That was David just Smith amazing. To, David to Smith. It. Right. That was just amazing play calling. Fantastic job by the guys downstairs. Carlos Villa on to attempt the extra point. It is up and it is good. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, a little adversity. We've been through some things already this season, so we're not really going to panic when teams appear to be getting back into a game. We heard about a big game being blown last night, right? There comes a time where when you've had that happen to you already, it, it matures you, and that was a very mature drive right there. And again, we got this. They, they took five and a half minutes off the clock, if I'm not mistaken right over there yep because it was 955 when they Not, got the football yep so renegades gonna be kicking it off with a two score lead 41 28 with 406 remaining in the fourth quarter carlos via oh, kicking off the for renegades. the renegades it's gonna be a short kick gonna be taken oh right at about the 16 yard line it's it's number 83 nice for the bulldogs Ooh. And he's taken down. Nice, on the nice tackle oh, right there by Gabriel Diaz at a Frontier High. You know, shout out to Frontier. They took care of business yesterday against the Garces Rams. 43 to nothing. I think it was a little act of mercy right there, too, because it was 43 nothing at half. Yeah, you know, it's tough. You know, we, we all got pride in our schools, right? And you 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 know you want to win every game. And I know we have a lot of Garces listeners, so again, yeah, I apologize yeah, you know. to the folks over at Garces. It's a, it's a first year for Coach Campbell over there, and he's right. going through some growing pains for sure. Right, and that was the point I was going to make. You know, we all got pride in our schools, but you hate to hear some schools going through these tough times. Oh, That's and Vele's pass. He caught that. Wow. Oh, he Looks at his complete. Wow, Makai Puga was able to bring it down. David Stevenson was breathing all over him. That that right there has to be the safety's play to make in Smith because you, you're the help corner. You're the inside help. And that ball is in the air so long, you got to be able to track that down and play it at the highest point. You got two guys back there, and, and they come down with it. The receiver comes down with that because you're not playing high point. Great tackle. Again, Makai Puga on their side has been their X factor. Yeah, he's definitely a playmaker. Man. We got to see where he's from. Makai Puga from Royal Grande High. Man, Royal Grande. Former Eagle. Royal Grande High out there in that tough league along with St. Joe's, Rigetti High School. San Luis Obispo High, number two. Great so that's job. Caden Harris, good. Keeping Contain. containment and Danny Johnson. Ball that's the first two, time two, that he was able to fight outside to Danny keep Johnson. containment. Every other time, that's been a, a 10 to 15 yard game. Well, the ice shack may not be in season right now, but Danny Johnson is. Yeah, you gotta you gotta fight hard to make sure that you're not allowing those big guys to reach block you and keep you inside. All right, so here we go, Kenny. Third down for the Bulldogs. They haven't been really efficient in this area all night. 
two of nine so far. Ooh, but out. Vele has got a wide open man. That's Puga once again. And he's going to get in for the touchdown. I mean, there's one guy over there that you might want to always have somebody on. And that's the number three, Makai Puga. But he was able to get open right there in that situation in the flat on a third down. Right, but the reason he's getting open again, Rob, is because of lack of discipline on the edge, allowing the quarterback to break containment. How many times have I said that today? That's about, that's what about as many times as Julian has said he doesn't like mayonnaise. Man, I'm telling you, about 40 times. <laughs> you got to keep containment. You don't do that, and you give up a play. The kick is good. So the kick is good, and we've got 217 remaining in this ballgame. 41 35. For the Renegades, we're going to take a quick timeout right here on Kearney's Talk AM 1180, 96.1 FM. And go All right, we are back here at Memorial Stadium. Rob Chavez and Kenny Calvin, 217 remaining in the fourth quarter. The Renegades with the lead. Onside? Looks like we do have an onside setup here, but they're going to kick it deep. Wow. They have Jalen Hankins back there. Jalen's going to pick it up at the 12 yard line. And Hankins is just going to slide down at about the 14. Now, again, this is a field positioning game right over here. And the, and the Renegades elected to only have Jalen Hankins back there with no up backs or anything like that. And, you know, the Renegades, if they just pick up three first downs, probably going to be it. Okay. The, Rene the, the Bulldogs have. All three timeouts to go but if they're in a situation where they force a punt here remember we've got a backup punter right who had a 14 yard punt earlier in the game well, well what I will say this is scary renegade Rob I, I, I will say a first down can win the game based on how you get it you know but three definitely puts them to sleep ace formation for the renegades here we go pointer in the backfield Pointer with the carry. Pointer's up the middle. Got him. He's Let's got go, some room at the 30. Right there. 40, That's 45, 50, 40, 40, 40, 30, 30 25, 20, 20, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Jacoby Pointer. Oh. That's what I'm talking about, little bro. Take the game in your own hands, and it's night night. Wow. Wow! Talk about a player that came to play from the coin toss. Too busy to even look me in my eyes because he was so focused. Jacoby Pointer. Night night. Two minutes even to play, and we were just talking about it being a scary situation. Only up six with their backs to their own end zone at the 14 yard line as Carlos Villa's extra point is good, and they are needing only. Three first downs, and I gotta give it up, and I gotta give a lot of credit to our resident Hall of Famer right over here who said only takes one first down to really close this out. But really it was just one big first down into a touchdown. That's all that's all I meant too. One big play puts them to sleep. 86 yards. Man, my guy over 300 house. yards of total offense probably right now. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to count this up. Yeah, probably at about 286 right now. Wow. 220, 221 yards, both on the ground and in the air. Wow. And as far as return yards, Jacoby Pointer has 30 yards return. Excuse me. Yes, 30 yards on a return for kickoffs. We're looking at, we're going to look at his punt return yards. So all-purpose yards, Jacoby Pointer, 251 and three touchdowns. <laughs> okay, so oh normally we wrap all this stuff up here, but you, you know, I, I think this is going to be a situation where we got to find Jacoby Pointer after this ball game, and it might not necessarily go on this live stream, but it's going to get on the Instagram. It's going to get on Go Gates at some point to be able to interview this young man because this is one of the most impressive games 
in recent history yeah. individually. A absolutely. Uh, we, we've watched a lot of football, right, as fans, as kids, as, as players, as coaches. It's very rare to see a guy take over a game like this. And I'm going to tell you who he reminds me of. It reminds me of a George Jones game. Like this was the kind of game George would have every week. He'd have two. He'd have 180 on the ground. He'd catch two screens for about 80 yards. He'd take a, a kickoff return to the house. Jacoby Pointer. He he said, "Hey, I know all y'all Hall of Famers here, but watch this. It's the Jacoby Pointer show today. We could I mean, in the next 30 years we could be seeing Jacoby Pointer at Luigi's getting honored. Woo." After a day like today, definitely. And a great open field tackle by Tyler Lewis, keeping number 83, That's Rolling Davis, in bounds with the clock running with a minute 50 All to go. Number nine, Tyler Lewis. And, and really just a, a, one thing that we're going to want to – what we're losing with – all of this is the fact that this offense has put up 48 points against a really good Bulldogs defensive team. Right, and they got started late. And that's that's what's funny about just finding a way to execute. When you can execute, it's it's like a, a, a microwave, man. You can just get things done quick. <laughs> Vinny Johnson, huh? Right. This kid's tough, too. Yeah, Makai Puga. Gets forced out of bounds. Clock stops. David Stevenson with the tackle. A minute and 14 seconds remaining. But Makai Puga on the other side. I mean, he's getting, his game is getting lost in Jacoby Pointer's game. Man, Jacoby Pointer just put on one of the single best performances I've ever seen out of an offensive player. I'm just proud of him. Just based on his focus from the tip. Wow. Wow, I'm speechless right now. And that's hard to do. That's, that's really hard to do. To talk. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Especially on Hall of Fame shut, week. You get me to shut up, you messing with my money, man. We get paid to talk. Man, this dude got me speechless up here, man. Wow. Mm -hmm. But hey, all jokes aside, those kind of runs that Pointer made don't happen without that offense because I'm, re I'm replaying that play in my head. He picked some holes that were there for him, and that offensive line did a fantastic job in this second half, down. man. Down. We got a, a bulldog down. And I told you guys, man, these, these Hancock and, and BC contests usually end up to be some thrillers, man. This one didn't let us down, did it? No, it did not. And I tell you, we got an injured player uh, on the field for Alan Hancock, and uh, that's why the clock has stopped. It looks like that's their quarterback, actually, Man, A.J. Bailey. Cool. <laughs> A.J.'s <laughs> played a very <laughs> tough game. Like, yeah, you're right. He said it before the game. He was their guy, and they're going to probably bring in their backup, number 17, Drake Missamore. Dang, so that, that's definitely tough for a quarterback in, in Hancock because this team has played – very well tonight. And you, you hate to see that kind of stuff happen in the last minute of a game. So we, we got Abel McCormick actually in the ball game. We're getting high. We're just talking about that league out there with the Royal Grande. Regetti, also another team out there in Santa Maria. Let's see what he'd like to do. Oh, Ooh, nice hit. Danny Johnson. Nice hit. Shivering, Rot. shivering, <laughs> shaved, <laughs> ice smack. Oh, he's, he's to go. Let they me get that to go. Him. They need to check him. They need to check him. He's wobbling. Who is that? The wow. quarterback? Yeah, 13. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So Hey, in, he was still on the field. In two plays, you've got Woo! two quarterbacks. Shivering, shaved, ice smacks. Take him out. That could potentially go out. And this, yeah, Jesse's taking a look. And he said he got up pretty wobbly. <laughs> hey, you know it's a big hit if the ref give you that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The ref wow. just gave Danny Johnson Dap on the hit because Danny he said, hey, that was an illegal hit. Nice hit, young man. That wasn't a late hit. And he made him pay for it. So three plays, three Woo! quarterbacks. Now you got <laughs> Shiver. number 14, Isaac Weishinger <laughs> in the ball game. Oh, man. And in I one play. All right. I hope the kid's all right because that was a huge hit. Shotgun double set. Yeah, and in one play, he's going to be out of there. As Weishinger gets in the ball game and 
you know, the, the whole thing is they're like saying, hey, why should you just get the ball to number three? Right, right. <laughs> yeah, well, let's get out of here. Yeah, that, that's the tough thing when you're playing a game and you're on the First opposite end of, a, uh, of the scoreboard losing it because now you're putting that ball in the air and it's hunting season for the DBs. Got to be very careful. Weishinger gets his pass out to the flats, and that is going to be tackled you know for a loss right there. Like, that's, like as DBs, we love when we know the ball got to be in the air because either we taking off a helmet or we taking something to the house. Right now, you got to be, be a responsible quarterback and not get your guys hurt because we flying around out there. 13 with Megan. So it looks like they're going to get their quarterback back, the one that was just knocked out. That was Abel McCormick. And Abel McCormick, not a big guy, 5'6", 160. That might be... Yeah, that might be one of the uh, the shorter quarterbacks I've ever seen at a junior college game. Right, Stand man, up to the man. short teams. And I try to tell my coach, man, you can play quarterback under five, under six foot, man. You never let me be quarterback, man. <laughs> Everybody wanted to be quarterback when we was kids. Who was your quarterback over there at BHS? Robert Carter. Carter, that's my, right. my, my brother, my brother and friend of, of 40 years. That's right. RC one. He had some targets, I'll tell you that. Yes, between he your, did. Between Charles Woolfolk and Steve Wofford, Larry Parker. I had Robert Grant, too. Ooh. As my quarterback my junior That's year. Right. Pass intended for number four. The team Moody falls incomplete. 38 Back seconds remaining. And again, I want to give a shout out once again to all of our sponsors. Valley Strong Credit Union, Carpet Outlet Plus, Barbage Hooper King, Dill Hoffman, Cal State Bakersfield, Les Schwab Tire, Pepsi, Sully's Executive Express Service, Hawk and Denton Palmquist, and Luigi's. Again, special shout out to Luigi's Man, for everything guys, they've done this week. Love you guys. I got one request, Gino, as we put pressure on this guy and he hopefully runs out of bounds so he don't get smacked again. We need a picture of me and Renegade Rob on the wall, too, man. That's right. Broadcast picture at the booth. We need a booth picture on the wall. We'll get it one of these days. We got a fourth down for the Bulldogs with 32 seconds fourth remaining. They don't convert here. Is probably this will be it for the ball game. Hey, this Officially. is a huge win for us too. Win game, Rob. We've had some tough losses to these guys. Yeah, it'll be the first time I've seen a, a, a win from this broadcast booth. Is he's going to slide short? He didn't know where the sticks were, and he went into the slide two yards shy, and that is going to do it for the Bulldogs. 25 seconds. One of the things that I said in the pregame before you got up here was the fact that these two teams came in with identical records, knowing that they had a chance still at making the playoffs. And the coaches talking to me throughout the bye week saying that even though this isn't necessarily it, by losing, they're, they're not looking too, too far ahead. They're going to play undefeated ball every week. Right. But they know that all their mulligans are pretty much done. Right. They cannot lose anymore and expect to be in a playoff from this point on. And we, we said what was going to happen. We, we start off slow. I mean, you hit the nail on the head right away. Just talking about how we haven't played our best football early in any games. We just have been finishing games great. And I, I, I got to go ahead and go with the microcosm of, of that saying, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. You know, hopefully that could be a microcosm of our season as well in finishing some postseason play. But I'm just proud of my guys not letting me down tonight. Worthy clap on them. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to take a quick break here as the Renegades have closed out homecoming 2024 on a successful note, winning 48 to 35 over the Allen Hancock Bulldogs. We'll take a timeout here on Current News Talk AM 1180 96.1 FM. GoGains.com. All right, and welcome back to Memorial Stadium. Rob Chavez, Hall of Famer, wow. Kenny Calvin, officially Man. on Hall of Fame homecoming week right over Ooh. here. The the, uh, the end of a pretty fest 
festive laden just all these ceremonies. Man, I, and I'm, I'm so and ready to get back the, to normal, but that was a beautiful way to end the week. Right. Absolutely. So uh, one of the things that I wanted to be able to uh, bring up today was just how I felt for the first time really, you know, being a broadcaster, the, the homecoming was really, really, really true today. I seen people at the barbecue. Gio walked around with me, and we seen a lot of alumni wearing the red. And, and, and it looked like what it used to a yeah. long time ago when you were playing, when I was a was student here, even when I was a kid coming to these games. And that energy was felt out throughout here. I'm, I'm waiting to hear what our, our, our attendance was. But this is probably the biggest attended game that we've, we've had as a broadcasting crew. Yeah, it, and it's a beautiful thing, man. You know, before we get too far, I definitely want to, Say prayers to uh, Jack Smith and his family. Yeah, ho hoping that he's okay. But uh, you know, for me, it, it was be it was beautiful from start to finish. Just seeing some of our old teammates, old coaches, getting some guys up here in the press box on the Dameron deck. Seeing Mike Waffle, the legendary NFL former Renegade coach, uh, doing the coin toss. All of that was beautiful, right? But nothing more beautiful than seeing how the guys played on the field and watching Jacoby Pointer execute, watching Igoa have the day he had, 19 of 21. That was an amazing day, four touchdowns. But that offensive line that got so much scrutiny over the last few years, I'm loving how they're coming together as a unit and, and opening up lanes for these four running backs. Nobody had over 10 carries, you said, but everybody averaged over about seven yards a pop, and, and Jacoby Pointer has 17 yards a carry. Like you don't, you don't get that without guys opening up the lanes, man. That's six yards a pop for all of our running backs. Yeah, 31 attempts, six, uh, you know, average of six. That's 186 yards rushing on top of the 319 yards passing from Vince I go. I mean, we were upwards of wow. 500 total yards on offense, led by. The MVP Man. of the game, MVP. the Red Shield player wow. of the game, Jacoby Pointer. Deuce. 221 Woo. yards on offense, 30 yards uh, on, a, on a punt return, 251 all-purpose yards today. Man. He was the man. He was the man, and it was so beautiful because we talked about how good the offense is. Any week it could be a different guy. We've raved over Makai, don't call me Pfeiffer Smith, all year, and he had a huge – uh, return that set us up for points that was like an 80 90 yard return so even though he didn't have a whole lot of plays all the guys stepped up man and it just warms my heart man it's been an emotional week for me but to see the guys that are living in the present as renegades have that kind of game that's what that's what uh that uh butters my biscuits man <laughs> that's, I mean? that's awesome and coming from a former player and now a hall of famer here that that that's uh that's really saying something and again i got i had a chance to talk with a lot of people who were really happy to see you go in man. and 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 uh the thing is is that it just pours into the broadcast here it's a, it's, it's a pleasure to be able to be here because it, it's fun right and uh and, and really it's, it's just a lot of synergy here because we're watching a good product here Getting right back to these guys here, they, they bring out what Bakersfield football is about. We've got a lot of guys here. These are current county all-stars, we call them, that have decided to stay home in the days of uh, NIL. They don't want to necessarily compete with these guys who have been in college football for three or four or five years, depending on where they're at and transfer to another school. They're staying home. They're honing their craft. They're getting some of the best coaching that they're going to find in the state and they're going to go somewhere else after that. But they're getting some really competitive football right over here and improving to 4-2 and two on the season, 2-1 and one in conference. They got a real shot at making the playoffs and making some noise. You, you, you hit the nail on the head for my next subject, the coaching. You know, I've watched coaches get criticism because we're not having playoff runs and stuff like that. Our coaches are doing everything they can to put players in a position to be successful. It's up to the players to respond to the coaching and execute. I'm not I'm not an excuse guy. I talked about that in my speech uh, during halftime, and it was great having Coach Chudy there who taught me to not make excuses. I don't like people making excuses about coaches when it's players. If your kid ain't executing, is not doing what he's supposed to do, getting dead balls, 
unsportsmanlike penalties after the whistle, that ain't coach's fault, right? So so kudos to the coaching staff, man, because to get this win and go four and two, four and two looks a lot better than three and three, right? You get yep. you three and three and everybody's like, oh man. But four and two, you still got you still got some juice behind behind your name and your your mission. And it shows that you're playing quality football. And like we said all year, we're we're three to five points away from being undefeated based on the kicking game, which we've seen struggle in moments. But kudos to Coach Alvarez getting through this game after losing a weapon like Jack Smith. And and now he's going back to the drawing board and figuring out who he's going to put in that position as we move forward. Yeah, we've seen Carlos Villa today uh, that stepped up and was uh, the kicker du jour um, and was able to you know, punt, uh, you know, have uh, kickoffs and – uh, extra points, and I know there are a couple of other kickers on the roster that are probably going to be taking a look at to see how they can contribute next week as they head back onto the road and go to Moore Park. Uh, we'll be again in the studio, uh, you know, broadcasting it from there. But it's going to be an opportunity for the Renegades to improve to five and two and really get rolling as they'll come back here for two straight home games, nice. one against Ventura and another against Santa Barbara. Ventura entered this week ranked number nine in the state so that's going to be a very hungry ball club that we're going to see come in here and try to knock off the renegades if the renegades take care of business like they should in moore park absolutely i'm, I'm excited uh to get this win we came out after the bye and in the first half very rusty and lackadaisical we're, we're fortunate to to turn it on but kudos to J uh, jacoby pointer man I, i'm just Man, we need to. We didn't even make no Pointer Sisters references tonight because we <laughs> couldn't even disrespect his name. He's just balling. We ain't even gonna play with your name tonight. <laughs> no, he's so excited. We're so excited. Just like all of them was. We're gonna take a look at some of these scores that are coming in uh, from around the area. Ventura to, is taking care of business down in Ventura at home, 30 to 12 against Moore Park. So it looks like they're gonna get another win and probably stay in the top 10. Uh, as Mountain Sack talking about rank number one ranked team in the state, Mountain Sack, with a 61-14 lead over, or excuse me, that that's a final over Cerritos. Um, so that is final, and that's a big win for Mount Sack uh, right there. We're going to be able to, we're taking a look for the folks that are in our own area. San Bernardino Valley uh, does not have a score on the board right there, and uh, looks like that's pretty much it. Uh, actually, no. We're going to check in right here. Santa Barbara wow. with a 52-7 to win over Antelope Valley. Of course, we took care of Antelope Valley. Uh, but I think our other two teams, Canyons most likely, Canyons Man. is on a bye this week. Got you. As they, them and uh, the other team in our, uh, in our league. You know, no, as, we, as we wind down, I just see a beautiful sight on the field as, as players from both teams – in a, in a prayer circle right now. At the 50. And that just made me emotional based on the fact that when it's all said and done, we all in this together as a village, man. It goes back to the village village conversation and the village standpoint. Just love seeing the camaraderie of these young athletes being able to, to uh, fellowship as men. And that's why we was talking about uh, Moses and all the <laughs> stuff in the religion in the first half because we knew how it was going in with these guys on the field praying together. That's a beautiful sight to see in a, in a great way to end this post game show, man. An honor to share this week with you guys. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I'm just ready to get back to normal, man. <laughs> get right back to it. Well, we're going to wrap it up here. Um, again, on behalf of Gio, Julian, Jesse, Hall of Famer Kenny Calvin, it's Rob Chavez here. The Renegades take a 48 to 35 win over the Allen Hancock Bulldogs, improve to four and two, two and one in conference play. We'll be on the road at Moore Park next week. Back here at home in two weeks, November 2nd, Saturday at 6 o'clock against Ventura. So long to everybody. Good night. God bless.
Bakersfield College Athletics thanks you for watching this broadcast. For more BC Athletics sports videos, highlights, and replays, subscribe to Bakersfield College Athletics on YouTube. And for news, live broadcasts, and schedule information across all our sports, visit gogades.com.